And welcome, everybody, to Not One Fun. Hope you had a great week. I know I did. And that's pretty much it. We got a good, we got a good intro today. Uh, not too much going on except for a couple things uh, in terms of sponsorship. Uh, we can quickly run through those. Uh, as you know, we are a part of Die Hard Dice's Dice Affiliate Program. So if you would like, you can support us by going to Die Hard Dice and checking out uh, an excellent set this month. Today, uh, the set has turned, or was it yet today? Yesterday, yesterday. The set has turned into an excellent uh, dice set. Let me go ahead and double check to make sure I'm not saying the wrong one. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I had this like ready and then I totally forgot, like on the spot, my brain. <laughs> Um, there it is, resources. And this month's uh, dice are Dreamscape Desert. Dreamscape Desert. So, if cool. you look up Dreamscape Desert Melody, uh, so Desert Melody, excuse me, Dreamscape Desert Melody. Ooh, are, those are pretty. Yeah, so they are a metal set. Uh, and oh, they yeah. have a uh, a purplish uh, kind of um, sparkle. There we go. Uh, they have a beautiful purple sparkle in the middle. I have them physically behind me, and I will show you guys later once we reach break time. Um, but anyways, you can go there and you can pick up uh, a nice set of dice. Um, they are a little bit more expensive than our normal sets that we, uh, we usually promote, but... Uh, again, if you purchase from them, we do get a cut, so it's even more support for us. But I will tell you, the code for Nat One Fun has changed. Last uh, quarter, it was Nat One Fun in full, uh, with the one in the middle. This quarter, from October to December, it is just Nat One, so N A T One, and you will receive your discount code for Die Hard Dice. Let's not forget to mention that Die Hard Dice just came out with a new set uh, of, or I, I guess a new line of dice that are neon inspired called After Dark, and they are absolutely insanely incredible. Um, just glow in the dark dice essentially for uh, your neon cyberpunkish futuristic space exploration, whatever type of dice um, and setting. Those are the dice you want to go to. So check out their After Dark line. Absolutely cool. Incredible. Not to mention they have a really neat dice tray that has a black light infused in the dice tray. So you don't have to go out and like, you know, have like a little flashlight to show off your dice. You can just have it on the table. <laughs> it's excellent. It's excellent. You got to you gotta go check it out. And like I said, the, the code is NAT1 and it works for all of this stuff. So whatever you pick up, type in NAT1 and it gives you a big discount on whatever you want to buy from the site. That's pretty much it. Uh, we are sponsored also by Voice Mod, but I'm not gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna go into it this uh, this episode. We'll go into it later. Um, and that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, we're already getting started a little bit late. Um, so unless you guys have anything for me, uh, players, um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. You got something, Trey? What's up? Yeah, I just want to shout out to Dan. He busted his ass getting all the old episodes uploaded to YouTube, and so those are all up now. Uh, which is yes. pretty damn cool. Thanks, man. I'm still uh -huh. I'm still lagging behind a couple episodes, but those are those are already being worked on. So thank you very much. Uh, I do uh, want to make sure that everybody gets an equal opportunity to view our stuff. Um, I did want to go back and start trying to maybe work on a podcast as well, uh, a version of our games that is a lot easier to listen to versus watch watching and stuff takes out a lot of all the the awkward pauses and the waiting between rounds and stuff like that makes it a lot easier to listen to i'll work on that see if we can get that fixed but i did like i said i, I uploaded to youtube and i want to continue to upload our our stuff so if you don't catch us live you can at least catch us on in, in that way you can always go back to twitch and watch it as well it's just uh, a lot easier and more organized on youtube um so thanks trey man that that means a lot thank you very much um let's talk uh real quick let me make sure that i got everything oh uh if you would like to help donate to charity uh you can type in excla exclamation point extra life and uh there's a link to the extra life donation um um page that you can 
donate to Extra Life. Extra Life is a great foundation that you can help uh, support local children's hospitals and stuff like that. So we're always trying to help in some way, and that's uh, that's currently what we are working on for now. Um, if you didn't know, we do give away a set of dice every month, at least one set. And this month, uh, Ray has been scouring the internet and has found an awesome set that we will be giving away this month. Ray, if you want to take it away real quick. It is the Die Hard Dice Fairy set. It's, uh, I'm having to pull, do this off of memory because I don't have the picture in front of me. If I remember correctly, it's not translucent, but it's uh, pearlescent. Nope. nope, that's the wrong one. What's the <laughs> word I'm looking for? That iridescent. Thing. iridescent. Thank you. Yeah. It's yep. fairly iridescent. Oh man, that hurt my brain way too much. <laughs> um, Check it out. I'm bringing it up on screen like right now. Greens and purples and pinks and yeah, with a little bit of glitter in it. So there That's we go. That's the one we went with. That is this I like week. glitter when it can't get on me. <laughs> So keep an eye out. We will be doing a giveaway uh, within the next couple weeks. And yeah, so that'll be this month's set. Uh, we can see if possibly uh, another set is in order. But for now, that's what we're going to weigh. So I hope you guys uh, stick around and note that uh, to, in order to um, get this set, you must be a subscriber to the channel. Jolly Green with the gift sub to uh, Guac, by the way. So thank you very much for walking. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate the support there, Jolly. And welcome to the Nat One family officially. Only I can call him that, Dan. Okay, guac. <laughs> All right. As the music comes to a crescendo, I will... Uh, I guess it's not a crescendo. As the music ends. Um, we, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will go ahead and get started with today's episode. I hope you guys enjoy. Today is going to be a lore-ridden and uh, kind of... Um, story heavy episode so i hope you guys enjoy let's go ahead and roll that things i'd like to thank joaquin for the gift sub to gm workshop giving uh, re-gifting a sub <laughs> as he was gifted one so thank you very much for the support joaquin and either way also thanks for the uh lose your glasses on the part that i'm supposed to read tiny little text so this is fun uh let's go ahead and start off with our last we left off as my eyes adjust to the light last we left off winter's end had just stopped the Chardolin dragon from snuffing out the entirety of Ten Towns by having a last stand with it in Bryn Shander. With Belina Harple's assistance, the team spent the next week tying up any loose ends they may have had in the town. While some chose to venture out to the destroyed remains of their own towns, a few stayed behind to help grieve and rebuild what was left of the city. After nearly a ten-day, our adventurers caught word that Velany, on top uh, with the help of Kinrava, uh, had stumbled upon some vital information pertaining to the never-ending night and the bitter cold. While explaining that there was possibly an extremely powerful magical item hidden in an ancient fallen city in the Reghead Glacier to the north, he also discovered the possible key to unlocking the entrance to said glacier. 
the codicil of white, a spell or tome locked away on a hidden island in the sea of moving ice, containing the many rituals of the followers of Oril. Although stating that this is their ultimate goal, she also asks them to help her find a lost artifact that would come in handy for them if they were ever to reach the lost city, a professor orb that goes by the name Professor Scamp, which was apparently stolen from her by a, follow, a fellow member of her wizardly coven. With all of that, our team's next mission, mission was to find out just how exactly they were to get to this hidden thing. Deciding it best to... Uh, by the way, I can't read because my freaking glasses. <laughs> I'm having to decipher what I'm saying as I'm reading it. Rough. It's rough. As a voice actor, this is killing me. <laughs> I can't even read a script. Deciding it best to call on the aid of fellow party member Ice Hearth Goliath family, they hurriedly made their way towards the Sky Tower settlement, high amongst the peaks of the Spine of the World mountain. And just before scaling the mountain, a frozen corpse in the snow catches their attention. Velany attempts to make a new friend. Necromancer, am I right? Old, unfortunately, this corpse was tied to the back of an ancient white dragon revealing itself underneath the snow. Luckily, Arviatoris, the dragon, had gone blind in its old age, and the party makes it out with their lives. We pick up as our team skates the bottom of the mountain, searching for the quickest way up, while setting up a base camp of sorts tonight. That was all thanks to Joaquin, how awkward and silly that was. So thank you for that. Um, and let's go ahead and switch it back over to our team. Nice. And <laughs> nobody's camera is on. Excellent. <laughs> sweet, what sweet, sweet. the fuck happened? Am I missing something? What happened? Uh, are... Just so you know, Dan, me and Joaquin are texting each other, just laughing at you. Oh, good. So. That's great. Uh, what's not great? Is the fact that literally all your cameras are off. Sweet. What is going on? Uh, get some music going while I try to figure this out. What the all fuck? Right, let's just let's just do it all over again. Happen. There's no way. No way. Oh, okay. We're back. We're good. Heart skipped a little bit, but we're back. Okay. So, we pick up as I had stated previously. Uh, yeah, it looks like everything's back. Looks like Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Just double checking. <laughs> Thanks again to Joaquin and uh, Jolly for the support before we get started. So, thank you very much, guys. Uh, also, a shout out to, uh, I believe it was Allie. Yeah, it was Allie that uh, finished up with a 10-month sub. Nearly a year, guys. Okay, so uh, as you guys pick up, uh, you see um, Veleni, uh with her kobolds as they are kind of like uh, trying to find a place to like look around the base of the mountains. Uh, and you see Veleni like shoving along the, um, the kobolds in front of her, like hitting her with her staff a little bit uh, that she carries along with her, um, that she is, uh, she seems a little upset that they didn't help her necessarily while she was <laughs> under attack by the dragon. What are you guys doing? It's late in the day, that. correct? Yes, yeah, it's nearing the end right. of the day. So we should find a place to hunker down, probably somewhere along the base of the mountains. I mean, I can set up a, I can set up a small dome anywhere we are. I'll keep up the weather. Are we near a trail that's going to lead up, or is it just kind of like climb? There is no trail up. Sick. It's going to be great. <laughs> you, uh, look, you look up, and you are essentially looking up a an untouched Everett. Sweet. <clears throat> sweet, sweet, sweet. We decided to push on a little bit more. I think maybe we should go ahead and rest. 
I know that yes. Aspeaks probably need it. Agreed. So, and do we have agreed. to leave them here, or are they gonna come to, up with it? To give the audience a better idea, a little bit better idea of like where you guys are located, I'm gonna switch us over to the battle map uh, page. Kind of show the travel that you guys have done so far from Bryn Shander at least over to where you guys are heading. All right. So, yeah, you look over at the axe beaks and uh, you see many of them ha are huddling together now with like their chicken legs like up underneath them, basically, uh, as they kind of uh, all huddle together and they seem to like be breathing quite heavily. Um, I feed them all. For the trek up the mountain, there's going to be a point where they're not going to be able to go any further, or will we be able to take them all the way up? Being as you've climbed down this mountain, you would think that there is points on this mountain that there's no way they could do it unless they could fly. Um, there are points where you're going to need climbing gear, rope, all kinds of stuff in order to progress. Okay. Got it. Um, she would mention... It's probably best that we don't take them up. There will be parts that, unless they magically learn how to fly, they're not going to make it. I just look over at Ken. A lot uh, of look I mean, there, there, there are currently <laughs> there are currently uh, six axe beaks as well as your group. So, yes. Can you do that? I mean, I could, but I'm not going to. That's a waste of magic. Okay, I get it ask. So they should probably stay down here. Be okay down here? Uh, like, did we bring him to freeze to death? Well... I... I'll probably feed him in the morning and then send him on their way. Bellany kind of looks over at the group and she's like, what did you expect? We were going to take the griffins back, were we not? That's fair. Um, maybe we could send a message to somebody to see if they can come pick them up. I don't think anyone's going to come all the way out here unless they need to. We've met a few crazy people in our time. Yes, but now most and of them are dead. And they're all in so. this group. Oh, yes. Yeah, there might be a little. I can't think of the word. What the fuck is the word? Pre. Occupied. Preoccupied. Pre <laughs> <laughs> what is this strange word you use? I don't know. It just popped into my head. What's a pre? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh god. Oh no. <laughs> Grimly. <laughs> I'll set up. I'll set up the dome then nearby the mountain. Will it hold us all? It can hold up to nine people. She kind of looks over at the kobolds. Hmm. Very well. So Kinrava is going to spend ten minutes just setting up the dome. You know, brushing away a little bit of snow so it's not, you know, what we're sleeping on. Sure. Yeah, you can kind of clear out an area. Uh, go ahead and roll me a uh, a survival check to see if you can find a decent uh, enough location, at least. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, that's actually pretty... Okay. Um, That's a 14. So you're scouring the area, at least, uh, to try and find maybe some flat-ish areas. That's maybe less rocky uh, than the rest. Um, you find seemingly what's uh, an okay area. Um, it's mo mostly packed snow um, and uh, and less like sharp rocks. But it seems like you could find at least a decent area to rest. All right, then she's just gonna set up the dome. Then okay, you, so you spend. How, how long does it take to cast? I think it's like 10 minutes or something more, or, or, or 11 minute. minutes when it's 11 used minutes. as a ritual. There you go. So if you choose to use a ritual 11 minutes later, a dome slowly kind of woof, emanates around in Raba. I will 
will make it white so it blends in with the snow. Okay. Excellent. And actually, I think there's one last thing I can do. Let's see if I have it prepared. Yes, I can actually. Ooh. Okay, so once everyone is inside of the dome and such, then Kinrava is going to take 10 minutes to cast the fourth level spell, Hallucinatory Terrain. Okay. Which will allow me to make it look as if the area where we are is completely covered up by snow, so we cannot be seen. Okay. So you kind of want to use it to, to go like over top of you and then like past yeah. you kind of thing to make it look like the mountain kind of continues yeah. past you. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. You can do that. Uh, to everybody else, um, you guys essentially see uh, the mountain start to kind of like form from the top and then slowly cross over top of you and then almost like a blanket of snow on the other side. Uh, you feel as if you're like clipping inside of a mountain in a video game. Um, and you uh, basically are covered for what you can visually see, at least, around you. It doesn't seem um, too much. But, of course, you know, being that you know it's an illusion, uh, you can peek through it as if, basically, uh, it was such. So it, uh, it is not like a solid object to you or anything like that, but you get the feeling that it could easily trick somebody if they were just, you know, flying by, moving by, or whatever. I just assumed it's best to have extra protection since we knew a dragon was in the area. We would Good be worse off without you. Uh, before we rest, give the... Um, Axe speaks a little bit more of a chance. I'd oh. like to uh, use my um, speak with animals mm -hmm. uh, to essentially tell them, like, you can't come with us. Um your best bet for survival is to, as a group, make your way back to where we came from. And hopefully they understand that. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the Axe Beaks, the one that you uh, you had procured for yourself, one of the larger ones, obviously, um, comes up to you and, and uh, as you start talking, it like notices it and immediately kind of like gets up and starts over towards you, listens to it and says, really? You led us all the way out here for us to go back alone we appreciate your aid we could not have made it this fast without you but it will be more dangerous for you on them on the mountain he kind of just looks around and I don't know how to get home ah uh. Kind of looks around for a minute. <laughs> okay. I mean, how do you do it? How would so, you get home from here? You know the big ball in the sky. Well, sure. Everybody knows the big ball in the sky. Okay, good. Uh, the bright one that comes out in the morning. They, it, it's always. Oh, night. never mind. That would only work if. Uh, are you talking about the sun the, rose? Are you talking about the, yeah? The, the, never the, mind. Uh, the, the big ball in the air right now. Yeah, never, never mind. That's not gonna work. <laughs> okay. Yeah, cause uh, that one, that one, that one kind of just stays up in the air and does circles. Yeah, it does. Um. Oh, okay. So you know how there are mountains right here. Yep. Travel in the opposite direction. Pretty much straight. All right. Um. Okay. And uh, go ahead and give me uh, an animal handling check. That's so Ooh. fun. Man, that is important. <laughs> Ooh. We will never see them again. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I didn't. I could never figure out a name for mine. I should have named mine emergency <laughs> rations at this point. So, hey guys, they, they're probably going to live 24. God oh. damn. <laughs> it, it looks in the direction that you're, you're, you're like pointing and just saying like going the opposite of the, the mountains and it goes, Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I know my way home. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, we should have Luke Skywalker them. 
No. He just looks over. What did he say? <laughs> uh, he, I don't know. He's talking about some weird person named Luke Skywalker. What a weird name. <laughs> All right. As it like turns and looks at Leia. Oh, wait, no, Leia's not there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Oh, no, Brad disappeared. Yeah. With That's really pretty mountain. Yeah, what was it? That was crazy. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it looks over and is like, oh, yeah, totally another way home. Cool, cool, cool. And uh, continues to eat. And uh, you can hear them conversing. Like as uh, as they talk to each other, kind of like oh, in their like talk. yeah, and, and they're like cla <laughs> they're clacking and uh, weaking and whatever they do, uh, you just hear them talking and it's just like yeah, they they literally just brought us here to die, I guess. Uh, but they're gonna I I, I I think I know the way home. Okay. And okay. And then she gonna go see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you walk back into the the orb. Uh, you see that uh, Veleni is um, doing some studying. Uh, the kobolds are just literally standing there like slack-jawed with their eyes staring off into the distance, doing nothing but breathing heavily and weird. Um, and uh, the rest of the group, um, do you have anything that you would like to do before night-night time? Nope. Okay. Then, nope. on that note, uh, Veleni... Hallucinatory terrain lasts for 24 hours. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so, Veleni will uh, congratulate you on your, your prowess here um, as you, you know, show off all the things you can do, like, uh, just kind of like as a safety matter. Um, she states that, um, you know, someone of your, uh, your talent... Uh, would uh, be welcome um, in the uh, the Brotherhood. So um, oh. you could, of course, uh, talk to her about that if you'd like later, but she immediately, like, disassociates and just turns around and goes back to what she was doing. Um, all right. And she says, guys, don't worry about uh, taking watch or whatever. I think uh, we're pretty safe uh, in regards to both being inside the sphere the hallucinatory terrain overboard and also uh she kind of looks over at one of the kobolds and she kind of smacks it with her her pole and it just kind of like wiggles uh she goes i got two sentries right here so they don't need to sleep i'm gonna call cuckoo over to me and whisper in his ear don't go near those things they kind of stink don't go near her they do I think they're dead. Oh. Yeah. You see him like take a like a closer look at them. He like crunches up his nose and then sits down next to you. They're definitely dead. All right. You should get some oh. sleep. We've got a long way to go tomorrow. Oh, oh. For, for sure. I'm super tired. Um, I guess can it's also getting a little cold here. Actually, the dome keeps everyone at normal temperature. They're outside the dome when she when he says that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> actually. Well, actually. <laughs> he suddenly walks in. He's like, that's better. <laughs> I hand him a ration. Oh. And use press the digitation to make it smell like and uh, rabbit. Oh, he loves it. Yeah, he digs in. He like buries his face inside of it and just starts going to town on it. All right. So, as you lay your heads to sleep. Um, um, um. um you kind of recall your last. Uh, day as it's been uh one hell of a day it's like a thorough travel and uh meeting up with an ancient white uh dragon just to watch it fly off as it nearly decimates you with a, a single icy blow uh you remember the fight with the chardolin dragon last week and it it kind of like it rocks you a little bit 
Um, but somehow, due to the lovely surroundings, thanks to the hut and uh, the hallucinatory terrains kind of um, allowing you to basically kind of take a load off. Um, you feel safe. At least physically. And you all find yourself drifting off to sleep. Now, what I need from everybody is for you all to go into the other room real quick. Because I'm going to take a couple of you to the side, or a few of you, or heck, all of you, to the side, individually. And oh, we're going gonna to have some conversation about what happens during this night. Oh, God. Okay. No. Oh, no. So I'm going to drag you guys to the other room, or you can go there willingly, and I'll drag you back. And uh, we'll see you guys here in a little bit. Huh. Huh. <laughs> All right. Get out of here, Grim. All right. So uh, real quick, I'm going to get these cameras going because we're going to pull each one of these guys in here individually. And our first victim is Olanu. Hello, oh. friend. Uh oh. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Good. Okay, let's get your camera set up real quick since it is like a individual camera thing. And we get this one thing set up. We don't have to do all the other people. We just copy paste. How you feeling? Nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. <laughs> All right. So let's get started. So with you, uh, Olanu, getting closer and closer to your own home, um, you know these this area as uh, a very spiritual place. Um, being that you started this entire adventure uh, with the fact that you had a vision of a terrible being or creature that uh, could possibly be um, the cause of all that has been going on recently in Icewind Dale. Um, you now are returning to such place. You have a closer connection to your spirits in this realm. Once you start getting close to your home and the glacier, I'm sorry, and the mountains and everything like that, you lay your head to da down to rest, knowing that this place is uh, where your cognitive abilities with your animal spirits are at its strongest due to your heritage. When you finally find sleep for the night, let's go ahead. Put some on real quick. Let's see. When you finally find uh, rest for the night, you are whisked away to the dream world. Standing about shin deep in snow, you find yourself in a darkened area. Standing at your side are the giant glowing blue representations of your wolf and bear companion. <clears throat> their forms wisping in and out with the flow of the heavy winds and snow that surround you. What do you do? He just kind of nods to them. It's been a while. You see that they acknowledge your, your statement, yeah. I have tried to walk your path. I've definitely gone down the path of the bear. But I've not tread the path of the wolf yet. They look at you and, and the wolf kind of like 
give you like um, a nod and it says even if you do not follow my path I am still with you. looks over at the bear and it says we are one although you may see us represented as two our spirits are within you as a collective it sits Next down like on his sits down on its haunches um the the bear takes a couple steps forward and then like tilts its head to the side and uh when it tilts its head out to the side you can start to see um that there is nothing around you it's a lot darker than normal no stars in the sky can be seen at all and the aurora is nowhere to be seen as well a slight ominous feeling kind of comes over you as it doesn't seem as magical as your last you know um meetings with your your spirits and as you look around, all you can see is a small light in the distance that seems to be approaching you at a rather quickened pace. Kind of takes a, a more defensive stance. And Do you know what this is? The bear kind of looks over at you and he just says, Bear yourself. She pulls out her axe. All right, hold on. Oh. Hello. Hi. All right, we're going to go ahead and switch this over to this. going to be a second to adjust. One second, one second, while I get this thing situated. Welcome, uh, though. Welcome, Brad. I'm never nervous for one of these, and I don't know why, but <laughs> I am this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then let's get Allie's set. Oh, wait. We're, we're doing this. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Is this happening? Ah! Okay. So, Allie... The figure begins to walk quickened towards your location. Brad. Yes. <clears throat> Grimly finds himself rolling off to slumber as usual. <clears throat> as you fall asleep, you sprint away in horror as the sounds of a blizzard take up your every sense. Barely able to open your eyes, placing your hands in front of you. You charge ahead as normal. And you see a shadow ahead. Of you. you, of course, already recognize it as, as the shadowy figure you've seen a dozen times before. And, um... But, this time as you draw your axe and approach it and kind of start running towards it, it morphed in shape, and Olanu stands there in front of you. Now, Olanu, you can see grimly in front of you as he approaches and, and kind of that shadowy form takes, uh, takes shape. But, grimly, you do not recognize Olanu in the way that you think. Not as the companion that has helped you defeat cultists, Durgar, and dragons, but just as someone that isn't your enemy or who you are searching for. Olanu, you do recognize Grimly just as he was moments before you went to rest. Seeing him, recognizing him, she wouldn't put her axe away, but she would greet him. Grimly? Who 
What do you mean? You're here to help it, aren't you? Help what? The dream presses on as the sounds of like howling wind and a, like a, a horrible hissing howl uh, in the background um, kind of sends shivers up your spine, uh, Olanu. Um, and grimly, you get the, the overwhelming sensation to continue to search for your companion. What is wrong? Um, I'm looking for my friend. I can't Who stay here. Friend? I will help you. Where would we look? The storm has been raging all night. It started. I, I, I lost okay? him. Who was your friend? You feel like you're losing time, Grimly. The more time you spend talking, the more chance that uh, your friend is is going to die. I am going to sprint past her. Grimly, we can't you stay here. Follow. Yeah, go ahead. Grimly, you She'll press follow. forward into the shadowy storm. And as you reach a point that you usually can are, are uh, going to fall down a large hill and continue to tumble downwards until you reach a basin, it doesn't happen. Before you fall down your normal cliff, you notice something, nothing like you've experienced until now. The storm just hits an invisible wall in front of you. You can see the snow and wind kind of butting up against it as if nothing can go through. And light can be seen beyond this barrier. It's almost as if the storm just stops in front. It continues to rage around you, but in front of you, it just stops. Press my axe through as I walk. Your slowly. axe, your axe, kind of begins to form itself through the barrier, like the barrier, barrier's light, kind of like ripples, where your axe kind of pierces through. Um. As. As the axe goes through and I notice that it's not going to stop me, I'll jump through quickly. Your hand kind of, yeah, your hand kind of passes through as you immediately like jump forward. And the second you jump forward, you are blinded with light. Your hand passes right through and as you walk through the biting cold end and you are bathed in warm sunlight. Your eyes need a moment to adjust. You're having to like put your hand kind of like in front of your face and suddenly as the light bloom kind of exits and, and you finally can, can see through that, standing atop what looks to be a large bronze staircase leading upward, a heavily armor clad silver figure stands nearly 20 feet tall in front of you. A gigantic sword held vertically nearly the entire length of the figure with its point down, with both of the figure's gauntleted hands gripping it. The grip... I kneel. Yeah, you, can, you begin to kneel. The grip, pommel, cross guard, an immaculate arrangement of swirling design makes what looks a made of what looks like shining gold the blade itself made of a translucent golden glass-like material. Your heart begins to beat so hard you can hear the blood pumping in your ears. Olanu, you reach this wall that Grimly has passed and you see his shadow kind of beyond the barrier. She'll reach out to touch it. You reach see out. See if her hand goes through. Yeah, you reach out and it kind of does that like warbling effect. Pushes through. You push through. Or tries to. Yeah, yeah. You push through. Your hand kind of okay. like 
just sinks through it, and you are met with a blinding light as well. And just as your eyes kind of like freak come into uh, into focus, you see that same figure standing there in front of Grimly. Grimly kneeling down right now, currently in front of you, kind of looks up in your direction, just kind of like un unknowing of of who you know who is this person following me kind of thing. And suddenly, as you pass through Olanu, the figure quickly, whoosh, you can hear the sound of metal screeching as the helmet moves, quickly turns to you, Olanu, and, uh, and holds up a single gauntleted hand towards you both. This giant hand, almost the size of both of you. And in its palm, you can see a familiar blue-lined eye. And as it holds it out, the eye flashes white and floods the area. And we'll see you here in just a little bit. All right. So we're going to move on to. Uh, let's find our next victim. So that was. Uh, Olanu. And uh, we are going to get Leodin next. No, we're not. Nope, we're not. I literally just said out loud, why are we all still in this room? <laughs> <laughs> just said it out Welcome loud. back. Welcome back. Uh, if you care to turn on your camera, we'll, we can get started. I'm trying. My mouse is being dumb. I don't... Hi. Hello. <laughs> All right. Is this when Cuckoo kills me? Welcome to the DM's office, Leonid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I didn't do anything wrong. Okay. So, uh, as... Ray moves in slow motion. We'll get started. Um, but <laughs> Leoden. Let's see. Cool. Leoden. The sounds of music fills the air, and you awake to the sweet smell of fresh pastries. What's your favorite pastry? What's Leoden's favorite? Go to pastry. What's something you haven't had in forever? Those little flaky ones that have the rich chocolate in the center. Uh, she doesn't remember the name because she. Does, I don't think she ever knew the name, but it's basically a chocolate filled croissant. Oh, for sure. Chocolate croissant. There we go. Perfect. Um. You find yourself inside of an ornate tent. Red cloth with yellow and green baubles and tassels clinging to the top. This is your old tent. This is your old room. Before you left for Icewind Dale. You hear the sounds of commotion outside as people are talking. Music is playing. You hear the sound of children laughing. As you step outside, you see a couple of children just chasing one another that run past and skip in step with each other. You look across the camp and you can see a couple, um, excuse me, you can see that there's a stove across the way that's being tended to by the matron mother as she wafts the steam of some newly made chocolate croissant towards her face. What do you do? The point of clarification. When you yeah, say sure. matron mother, you're talking about my grandmother, right? Your thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Yep. Uh, I start to run with the children and then see um, my uh, grandmother. And so instead, I go to her. Um, I'm gonna try and steal a, <laughs> a croissant. 
<laughs> yep. Even knowing that she would give me one, this is just a game that we've played since I was able to take things yeah, off the yeah. plate. Of course. So you uh, start to kind of um, chase the children around and you you're, they're like laughing as they notice that you're, you know, now you're kind of after them. They hear the footsteps behind them. You kind of hold your arms up like you're the scary monster kind of thing. As they're running away, you notice that you start to get like goosebumps on your arm. And the weather starts to get really, really cold. So cold that as you're running with the children, you begin to start to see your breath. Oh, I see my breath. Yep. And the wind begins to pick up. You start to move closer to your matron mother. Your grandmother even, like, waves you on as she sees you. She's like, come on, come on. And as you start to, like, run towards her to try and get a croissant, maybe kind of just blowing off the fact that maybe it's just getting a little cold here, you start to take a step and then another and another, and it feels almost like you're on a treadmill. Not making any progress as you step forward. Wind begins to pick up. You can start to hear the clinking of small metal decorations. And you can even see some loose piles of goods start to give way and blow in the direction of the wind. But it seems like nobody's really paying attention. Nobody's going after the stuff that's blowing away. The children are still playing. You see some people kind of laughing and gathering around a table. And your mother is still kind of just blowing uh, the smoke off of the the newly made pastry. Does, do other people look as though they're affected by the cold? Or are they just full on ignoring it? They're like, full it's... on ignoring it. I'm going to keep, I'm going to uh, start yelling at um, my grandmother. I wish I had my notes in front of me right now. I Her name remember. is Nevena. Grand Nevena, can you hear me? She kind of just says in a tone that you can barely hear over the wisp, the wisp of the wind kind of blowing in your ears. And she's like, Leiden, you're still over here. I'm trying, I can't get to you. She seems to begin to like get smaller, almost as if you're traveling backwards now. The no. snow begins to whirl in. The wind now becoming a, a, a kick up, almost like a blizzard. The wind becomes so harsh at this point that the tents themselves begin to lift up from their stakes and fly into the now foggy landscape around you. It was a beautiful landscape before, but now this fog has rolled in and all the snow takes over and the, the, uh, the tents and all the things, your bedding, pillows, everything that you had are blowing in the wind and nobody is reacting to it. Everybody is just continuing on with their lives. The children you see are, are still chasing one another. One tags the other and begins to run the opposite direction now. You take another step and you find that your foot is buried in about six inches of snow. Hey. Why are you in the cold? The fire in the center of the camp goes out, snuffing the once warm glow of the area, now leaving a dark and desolate landscape. The two children begin to dance around you while you're running, jovial as ever, but then blow away into a puff of snow. The rest of the people that surrounded the lively camp can be seen continuing on with their breakfast and music until they also are blown away in clouds of snow. Surrounded now by nothing 
but a blizzard. Panic and loneliness began to set in as no one answered your call. I would, I'm, I'm going to stay running blindly in the direction that I was going. The sound of crunching snow under your feet as you move forward in an aimless direction, seemingly. Until finally you, you stop for a moment to catch your breath. And you look down. And slowly walking up to your side, you see a familiar bluish-white snow fox. Cuckoo looks up at you. Says, is that your family? That is, that is my family, yeah. You see the, the fox kind of nod back and forth. Cuckoo looks back up at you. Keep them out of my domain. All right. We move on to Abel. <laughs> Hello there. Motherfucker. How are you? I am dreading whatever is happening right now. <laughs> It oh is, god. Yeah, that last one actually kind of gave me heart palpitations. That was fun. Oh no. All right. Let's get you situated. <laughs> Man, I'm literally dying over here. I'm like I have so much adrenaline. Good. I just want to run I away. I, I had adrenaline pumping just now. It was fun. Okay. So. <sighs> Abel. You roll around in your sleep. You recoil and wince as the constant image of your wife screaming in pain as your house burns around her now pains your every slumber. Now, tonight, it's a little different, though. You sit on your knees, powerless to stop anything that is happening in front of you, your knees buried about five or six inches into the snow as the house's wood creaks and crackles in the fire. Everything around you, the town that was once there, all the people screaming, the Duragar that were fighting, nothing but the house in front of you. But suddenly, time seems dilate. The fire slows nearly to a stop, and the sounds of the wind and flames dissipate. The entrance to the house <clears throat> um, begins to rebuild itself, plank by plank. You see moving wood kind of floating into position. And you see, but instead of a rectangular shaped entryway, it's more in the shape of an arch. The top of the doorway, instead of being made of planks, you see is being formed by some more like vine-like tendrils of wood. The entryway begins to glow a bright white. And slowly, a shadow begins to form through the light. The shadow of a shapely woman 
begins to form and slowly inches towards you. Lena begins to come into view. But two things immediately catch your eye. One immediately being that she is completely nude and that her beautiful hair reaches down nearly to her knees. But secondly are the twisted natural wooden horns that seem to be coming out of the sides of her head and twisting upwards. Small strands of wood and natural vines daintily wrap themselves around her supple, freckled, light brown skin. She's not pregnant, as you last saw her. And just to her side, hiding halfway behind one of her legs, you see what looks to be a small, frightened child. Also nude, with tiny little wooden nubs protruding from her temples. Lena kneels down next to the child and says, Alana, go meet your father. The child kind of puts her eyes down and slowly steps forward towards you. He's just stunned. Um, he sort of hesitates and then sort of reaches one hand out towards Alana. Sort of his head cocked to the side, looking confused. Alana takes a few steps forward towards your hand and doesn't necessarily reach out for it. Looks back at Lena. Lena kind of nods. Both of them seem to be standing atop the snow, not like inside of it. And then you see Alana look towards you again and smile and then kind of take a step and then bounds towards you and hugs around your shin. I'll sort of squat down and look at her in the eyes. You look at her eyes and it looks like your normal eye set, but there's like a faint bluish glow behind the irises. I'll reach down and just grab her hand and hold it. If she lets me. She seems a little skittish at first, but being that she's there hugging you now, she kind of has come to accept it. Lena walks up to you while you're kind of having this small uh, meeting. And she takes her arm or her hand and kind of like places it under your chin and raises your head to hers and now stands about a foot taller than you. She says, Abel, I am visiting you through a rift between realms. Our time is short, and I will explain everything through time. We are safe, so please rest your morning ways. I have watched over you from afar, as I'm sure you have known for some time. But now, a situation has been altered. In order for me to keep my bond with you strong, I need you to promise me something. To reconfirm a bond that can't be broken. A bond that transcends time and realms. A bond 
you already gave me in mind. But now a bond that we must share in our soul. Will you take this journey with me? She takes her hand and raises it in front of her, revealing a familiar wedding band on her ring finger. Yes, my love, I promise anything for you. You see, I, just look, I look down at Alina and just smile at her. <laughs> Alina is just kind of staring up at you both, just like trying to decide what's going on, not necessarily knowing what's happening. Lena looks over and she says, give me your hand. I'll sort of release all in his hand and sort of squeeze my hand, the glove of my hand for a moment to get some of the feeling back from the cold before I take the glove off and then give it to her. You place your hand in hers and she takes her other hand and like kind of raises it in the air and you feel a tug on your neck as your ring raises up into the air and loops itself up over your head into your hand. She takes her other hand and places it and grasps it over hers, showing her hand that has the ring on it. Then take the vow with me. I love you, my sweet. She I love you. She kind of raises her head into the air, and your hands begin to glow a greenish blue light. And suddenly, a slew of tiny wooden bands begin to wrap themselves around the metal and tourmaline uh, gem on her ring. And she unwraps your hand, and you can see the ring that was around your necklace is now formed as well, a band of tiny wooden bands around it. As the magic kind of subsides, she breathes deep, and the form of this beautiful woman you see begins to kind of harden almost into like a wood-like structure instead of a skin structure. Not all the way, almost as in like patches. And then slowly returns back to human skin. She looks at you and holds your face with both of her hands as she kind of looks down at you. She says, come home to us in time. We will be here, waiting. Say goodbye, Alana. Alana looks up at you. She says, goodbye, father. As Alina takes uh, her hand, they kind of slowly retreat back towards the, the opening in the doorway. And they disappear in a flash of light as time returns and the last of the wood crumples to ash on the house in front of you. And you are left standing in the howling snowy Tell me I didn't time that perfectly with the music. That was damn good. Okay. Uh, all right. That's it for you. Thank you very much. We will see you here in a little bit. Thank you. Oops, I kind of cut off his thank you. Sorry. Hey, it's double me. How's it going? Anything. How are you? I didn't pee in the water fountain. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but good. I'm glad you didn't. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to get you uh, set up camera-wise real quick. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Oh, boy. It's my turn on the chopping block. First time, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, first time for dreams and such. The only time was with Trovus or something. Mm hmm. Oh, no. Welcome to the DM's office, Thick Rava. Someone said. <laughs> Oh, no. All right. So here we go. Uh, in Rava, you find yourself taking a quick little nap. And as you are concentrating, you are flooded with images of the Underdark. Flashes of your life, one moment after the next. Your sisters in arms fighting in formation. Their fluid mo movements, more of a dancing, uh, a dazzling dance of drow made steel than a militaristic drill. They stare at you. You notice that you are back up against a wall, covered in cuts and bruises. You are kind of like with your, your butt against the ground and your back against the wall kind of thing. The lead drow in charge of this week's drill, Friska, holds her sword to your throat and leads you up until you're in a standing position. Weak. She signs in the silent drow hand language before striking you with a blindingly fast right hook that sends you careening to the ground that you even har you hardly even saw coming. Leaving you on the floor unconscious. You awake in your father's chambers, hardly conscious. Your father approaches you as he sees your eyes open and kind of dabs you on the head with a wet cloth. He's shaking his head. Looks quite disappointed. Do you say anything? He says nothing. Just looks away from him. He he kind of looks uh, at you, and um, he takes his hand and like pulls your chin, uh, not in a very nice manner. Like pulls your chin quickly towards him. He says, just a while longer, Kinrava, and you'll show them all what power truly is. You've studied enough. He looks around. I believe you are ready to finally mold the weave to your bidding. Your first technique will be to conjure a bolt of flame. But do ensure that no one catches you practicing, or it will be both of our heads. I understand, yeah. Father. He kind of sneers. And then you hear, like, footsteps outside of the entryway of the stalagmite. As he, like, immediately, like, turns. Just quickly, rest your eyes. As he stands up, you see a shadowy figure entering through the doorway. You don't see anything because your eyes are closed, but you have a a, uh, a second um, or a sixth sense, knowing that they are commuting, communicating together with hand symbols. You hear a, like a desk get thrown across the room and broken across the wall. And as you do, you kind of like forcingly kind of like, or, or like not, uh, uh, unconsciously just turn to your side uh, and open your eyes and you are met with the back end of a pommel and go unconscious yet again deep heavy breathing accompanied by the sounds of approaching footsteps behind you bring you to realize that you are running and being pursued Omen is flying ahead of you and allows you to follow quickly, but the poison is slowly seeping into your veins and it's making it very hard to run. A rumble from behind you wakes you from your lethargy, and uh, as you watch a giant armored worm careen 
through the cavern wall. First, looking directly at you and nearly goes for an attack, but then hears the sounds of the large party that was following you. Turns to the side and immediately faces the squad of drow. The other drow stopping in their tracks, seeing this creature. It begins to attack them. The sounds and screams of your dying sisters gives you a moment of delight. As Owen bursts through a snowy barrier in the cave, allowing you to feel your first burst of snow and cold wind. You step through, weary, tired, injured, and now freezing cold. The poison takes hold, and you collapse from exhaustion. All right. Stop with the horrible screams. And we will make our way back to the game. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Hi. You to pop, pop those screens back on. Glad to be back. <laughs> How's everybody feeling? Good. Dreamed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like all those answers. What was that, Leiden? Concern. Concern. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. So, as uh, you guys find your way to sleep and have your, your fun little escapades <coughs> during the night, you are all awakened to the sound of um, Veleni struggling in her sleep. Away from me. Away from me! And suddenly... Hold on. Uh-oh. Boss fight. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's checking his notes. This is where villainy turns on us. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. So that soon. That gives me a That's reason to kill her. Right inside the dome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't survive that. Don't do it. <laughs> so, is her? There's a spell book somewhere. On, I thought it was in the back. It is on another page. Do. Nope. Um, Usually in the back under the creatures, isn't it? Yeah, it it is. Uh, but there is um, there's stuff that she knows, and then there's stuff that is written in her, in her book. Um, well, for fuck's sake. Okay. Right? So, what, a, what a stressful. For, <laughs> for the sake of uh, kind of beating them. Oh, nope, nope. I found it. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to drive both my short swords into her chest and just end <laughs> it here. <laughs> Of okay. Uh, oh, you so don't have to look it up. For the sake of this, um, <laughs> as he awakes and says, get away from me, uh, I need everybody to make oh. I need everybody to make a constitution saving throw. Now you all have uh, No! Now you all have a paladin aura, I believe, next to you. Yes. So don't forget to add that. Plus three. I'm fucked. Uh, can't save. Oh. Okay. Uh, wow. For any of you that got a uh, 17 or above, you are fine. If you did not get a 17 or above, you awaken and see her struggling to hold her hands out. And when she does, a black orb of energy exits from her hand into your eyes. And you are blind. 
Who failed? Oh, shit. Um, just for the oh, record, no. <laughs> I tried to roll in chat, but Arth did it at the exact same time. So I don't know who uh, who that went to. I'm pretty sure I formatted it wrong anyways. Yeah, I don't so I I think I roll... that's, that's Arth. Yeah, so I rolled in person and I got a natural one. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, excellent. I like that. Yes, I yes, yes. Very, very <laughs> able. Seven's twelve plus Sound three. Brand. Is yeah, Fifteen. Brand. So. Okay. So able with that, and uh, also it looks like two others. Uh, we have Abel, uh, Grimly, and uh, Leoden all failing. Um, whatever light you saw, whatever things you saw, immediately, woof, disappear. All around you is just darkness. It's black. Ken and uh, Olanu, you do see her wake up, and she just seems kind of, like, surprised. What happened? You had a nightmare? Do we see, see that something's... Okay, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah, you saw the energy <laughs> flow out of her hands into their faces, and they're like, ah! <laughs> uh, you did something when you woke up. Could, do you undo this? Abel, is that you? E. <laughs> just Clark just puts a hand on his you're, face. I, and I was about to say, that's not me. You're, that's not say, me. you're like, like cupping like uh, someone's like uh, butt or something, like as they stand <laughs> next to you. Uh, no, um, she kind of looks at everybody and she's like, "Oh my!" And she takes her fingers and snaps, and the like the darkness. It doesn't just go away. But the darkness goes from like within you and then like seeps back out of your eyes. Jesus. Back into her fingers. And it oh, leaves you just with like a, just a terrible like ugh, sensation. <laughs> and on that note, since everybody is awake, we'll go ahead and take our first break. <laughs> and we got, you know, done with our little dream escape here. <sighs> Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed our little dream session. Um, we will return with uh, some more stuff coming up. So hope you enjoy. We'll be right back. Ooh. Now is the time to talk about what the fuck just happened in chat. If you yeah. like, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We were uh, talking that we need to record our other conversations. Our other conversation yeah. has just other like. Side. <laughs> and as as players, uh, you're more than welcome to always, of course, go back and talk about what what happened. It, it's mostly for the in game sensation of of kind of being lost in the moment. So, all right, oh. I'll be right back. I'm gonna use the restroom. Everybody else, acid Dan's acid yeah. <laughs> session. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back, guys. Uh, go get you some drinks and go to the restroom, and I'll see you in a little bit. Whoa. Seth. That's how that goes, Seth. I feel like everybody had a bad time. That's the consensus. Rava is exactly not even looking bad. at Valony right now. I see Lee. She is facing away from the group on the edge of the dome with her foot up. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Raining Garth, doodly do, doodly do. It's uh. Ugh. I was like, no, don't go to break. I went to break while everyone else was stuck in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Dreams. <laughs> yeah, it was like we were getting called into the principal's office. One yeah. at a time. Yeah. <laughs> we did nothing wrong. <laughs> I didn't pee in the water fountain. <laughs> I'm gonna go refill my drink. Yeah, I'm gonna go get a drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nope. I should probably get a drink after that one. Yeah, I'll refill my water bottle. I got a little Blanton's red that I'd like to t dip into.
All right. <laughs> Elgrin. I had a great time, honestly. <laughs> so many in the DM's office. Y'all know what you did. You know why you were called to the principal's office. I should have showed off the, the fact that I'm wearing my Nat 1 shirt whenever Abel rolled that. So much love, love Principal Dan. <laughs> oh God. Well, if we ever do like a high school one shot or something like that, I definitely am going to be Principal Dan in that. I think I'm gonna do away with my green screen for a while. Sure. It'll uh, motivate more, me to more keep my room than... clean. Oh, nice. That's a good idea. I was gonna say, is it more trouble than it's worth? But yeah, that totally uh, makes sense. It also makes me feel like I'm trapped because it's like right behind me. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Remember, you always have a pal in your principal. <laughs> principal. Please don't oh, tell what? me that they actually said that to you because. Oh my god, that's awful. <laughs> oh man, in our in our high school there was a big food fight. And like the whole goddamn high school and then the principal came and all the like the police because we just had police at our school all the time. Okay. And uh, someone punched the principal. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, man. We all got that's sent home. It was horrible. Jeez. The same day it was raining really hard and somebody pulled the fire alarm. So we all had to get out of the school and go stand in the rain for like 15 minutes. It was pretty bad. Somebody got expelled. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Is that Man. Seth's character in a game or something? Oh, that image? I think he created it in Pathfinder. Ah, okay. I think I think he said that. That's what oh yeah, he said he had to mod it to get it done. To get Ken Rob to get Ken Rob in there. <clears throat> gotcha. Dan just went to land parties in high school. This is true. This is true. Lucky. A Breakfast Club one shot. Oh boy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I dig it. I should watch that movie. You haven't seen it? Uh, there, there was a sort of Breakfast Club type um, Critical Role episode where they did the Hogwarts type campaign. Oh, yeah. And they stuck them all in a classroom to start <laughs> in detention. Jolly's got a theme song for you there, Trey. See that? It's fitting. <laughs> Honestly, it could go to either. That could work for either me or. Uh, Alley. Here's Ain't Ray. no party like a land party. <laughs> oh, wow. <gasps> oh, y'all. I wasn't DMing. I might have one afterwards. I needed a drink. I needed a drink after that. That's it. Mm. Not one after. I forgot the after snow. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I'm doing five shots to bring Kane oh, in before we. No, God, no. <laughs> okay, no, no. It's, it's not Dan's birthday. Yeah. After... yeah no, a year, we're not. Bro. Big One difference. Year. It was a, a joke. You need to actually be able to answer a question. <laughs> Dan can answer him for me. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll just be passed out <laughs> on the fucking floor. We, like we did sit time. in a warehouse. That's true. All right, looks like everybody's back. Get back to the story. <clears throat> roll that intro. <laughs> <laughs> Just roll the intro again. <laughs> All right, so welcome back, everybody. Uh, also, we hit our, our sub goal. That's fucking awesome. Thank you guys hey. for all the support. Hey. Um, I'd love to see that number go even higher, but as it is, I, that's pretty fucking awesome. So thank you very much. So uh, we might move that up and uh, might do some incentive stuff coming up as well if it reaches a certain amount. So I think that would be beneficial to the community. 
and uh, a fun little goal to reach. Um, okay, so <clears throat> with that, you guys awake, and it seems blind. That, yeah, awake that you're blind, and then you're not. Um, you feel like you had like a a string pulled out of your eye, um, and uh, oh, yeah, exactly. Throw up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and you you come back to being able to see um and uh as you do um the the dome around you woof, uh the eight hours is through and the cold weather just beats on you like whoa like a wave Oof. of freezing cold air strikes you all at once and Rava is just facing away from the group with her hood up, mm -hmm. and she was on the corner of where the dome was. All right. Um, we'll say that um, it is a new day, so if you would like to go ahead and expend your daily ration, that way we don't have to worry about hunger on our way. I do that, and I also give one to Cuckoo. Sure. Cuckoo goes face first in again. Loving it. Yeah, one for myself and one for Percy. I was just thinking, wow, I don't have many rations, and I remembered I like stole all the underdark food off that dwarf's table. <laughs> <laughs> it's rotten by now. I grimly. It's, been, it's been like a week and a half. What do you mean two days? It's been like a week and a half. <laughs> oh, it was a week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you sleep well, Grimley? Uh, yeah. Um, not not as bad as usual. How, how about you? It's been up and down, but today was it started a little rough, but I got there eventually. Alanu every now and again just looks at Grimley, kind of weird. Uh, Grimly rolled me a roll me a great intelligence. Ooh, his specialty. <laughs> uh, check. Does the aura go towards checks or just saves? No, just save. All right. Um, that will be a thirteen. Hey, that's not bad. Okay. So with a 13, um, you have a weird like sense of like deja vu almost. Um, when you look over at Olanu, she's kind of giving you like a concerned look. You're like, why do I feel strange as if I, I feel like something is amiss or at least something is correlating between you and Olanu. I don't know why necessarily. But it's like a strange sensation. What the I hell think... happened? <laughs> uh, she just kind of shake her head and like get oh. her stuff up. Also, and... I, I do want to put this out there. If you ever want to just say what happened in your fucking dream as your character, be like, hey, guys, I just dreamed this shit and it was fucking crazy. You're more than welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just about to do that. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yeah, do your thing. <laughs> oh, like Grimley was about to tell us everything. Now, being that, like I said, you don't really remember Olanu, yeah, you yeah, could yeah. definitely tell the story. But then when it gets to that part, you're kind of like, there was just a, there was someone there. I'm just yeah. having difficulty remembering what or who it was. Go ahead, do your thing. Sorry, role play. Uh, Alanu starts getting her stuff ready and kind of looking up the mountain, um, trying to see where the best route to go up would be. I'm waiting for everybody else to do the Back same. Up. Yep. I think that for the first time, I actually met Helm. I don't don't remember that well, but I felt his presence stronger, and I, it's like he was there.
Olanu, this then immediately kind of piques your interest being that you were like kind of unsure if it was like a shared dream or if he was just, you were just, you know, dreaming that yourself. But now that he says that, you confirm that it was a shared dream. It's, it's, it's different than usual. Typically, I, I dream of hellish, hellish images and Torg. You kind of wake up screaming often. Mm. Um, if that was your god, he's powerful. If I Helm is my too. god. I'm talking about the person we saw in the dream. You were, I was there. you were there. Yes. Do you not remember? I didn't see you. Yes, you did. You talked to me. So now that she's mentioning it, it's slowly seeping into your consciousness. You didn't seem to recognize me. You were looking for someone. You wouldn't say their name. Just so that they were your friend. Typically, my dreams end with me either burying my axe into Abel or the eye forming in front of me. What did Abel do to you? I'm... I'm sorry. Uh, Torg. Forget I said that. Well, who is Torg? Um... He was a good friend of mine. He kind of saved me. Before all... All this started. You said... I don't know what lost. happened to him. I lost him in the storm. Before I ended up in Branch Ender. And... Every night I... I, I either dream of killing him or, or worse. Hmm. And I. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Not you. I can't live with the fact. I can't live with it if that's that's what happened. That that image, his face. There's something following me. And and lately, Helm has been there, I believe, to protect me. Interesting. But now, now that I think of it, you were there. And you saw him. Yes. How? might have something to do with the mountain. My people share a connection with this land, with the spirits of it. From time to time, we are given visions. Your mountain and its spirits to stay the hell out of my head. You aren't always shown the things that you want to see things you need to. I've seen plenty enough as it is. Come on. The snow beats down on you guys and the wind kind of howls uh, down the mountainside. Uh, if you've ever been aside a mountain, um, it beats hard. The wind is, is strong here. Um, 
you can see snow drifts high above you kind of like drifting out into the sky from the the fresh powder that falls upon the mountain and it's a daunting sight um but we'll say for uh, purposes of time um that you begin your climb olanu since you are uh of course um used to this kind of trek it's not necessarily so daunting to you, but for the rest of you, this is a hell of a fucking climb. Um, climbing gear is necessary at some times where a sheer cliff, if not a inverted cliff, where you have to kind of climb backwards and then up around the side uh, occurs, um, it is a tough climb. So being that Olanu is kind of the... the um, you're ahead of this operation. Olanu, I'm gonna need you to make some survival checks to kind okay. of yeah, to kind of uh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. What, what's up? I have a climbing speed. Is there oh, yeah. any way that I can use that to give her advantage or something? Uh well I'll say that uh if at any time there is a failure, uh you can roll individually um okay. to see if you you succeed on it. Uh, I'm a pina colada. Welcome in. And, uh, also real quick. Thank you, Cav, for the, uh, the gift sub to Huff Puff. That was very kind of you. Um, hey, <laughs> he's an okay dude. He's an awesome. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll do some climbing situations here. Olanu, it is <laughs> your turn now to prove yourself as a Goliath of the, uh, of the spine <laughs> of the world mountains and roll me some survival checks on your way up. So After first the off, the first roll is just going to be a survival check to see if you can find an easier route up the mountain. So go ahead and roll me a survival check. Just roll really high. You got it. That's it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> Easy, just to roll high. Hey. Hey. hey all right. What do you get? 24. Woo. All right. Damn. Uh, so Olanu spots a, a huge, like, over-encumbering, like, terrible way around the route up. And instead of going up that and spending, like, hours just climbing up that, you spend, like, 30 minutes finding another route that leads you closer to the top and quicker. So with that, that's awesome. Takes you closer to the top of the mountain. Now. Since Olanu is, again, in, in the lead here, I need you, Olanu, to, uh, first off, roll me a, a perception check. Ooh. Now, okay. you, can, you can roll with, uh, with Abel, because I believe, Abel, you have uh, some stuff with your ranger being the, your favorite terrain and stuff like that, correct? Uh, not for, like, mountainous terrain. Okay, not, never mind. Never mind. This. Yeah. Ooh. It is my favorite terrain. Oh shit, she's a ranger. <laughs> oh fuck me. I, I totally forgot. Surprise! <laughs> Don't forget. Uh, so oh, I guess that's, that's one, amazing. That's one way of bringing so about uh, a little bit of a multi-class surprise. Hell yes. So uh, oh, for those that, that are do? just kind of catching it, uh, yes, um, Olanu is now uh, one level into ranger as well as barbarian. Oh, so good. Killer. Oh, no, that's ever enemy. I'm like, wait, what does this thing do? I have to go look for anything. Which reason doesn't give you anything? Well, I'm going to go ahead and give you an advantage on the roll due to you, your favorite Oh, okay, terrain. okay. Cool, 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 cool. Um, do you want to know the actual roll? Yeah, for that's a second. Fine. Let, let her, let her okay. do the roll, and then we'll, yep. we'll go over it. You got it. Okay, uh, that was for perception, right? Correct. Okay, so it's a 23. Woo! All right. Thank you for that perception, because the other one was a three. <laughs> or the advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, real quick, what's the, the actual rule, Mr. Ranger? Go ahead. Uh, her proficiency bonus is doubled for intelligence checks and wisdom checks. Okay, so you get double proficiency on your perception and all that good stuff. So, that so like survival, level. perception. Yeah. Oh, and the other rule would have been higher, too. Okay. Yeah. So, either way. <laughs> Very nice roll. Um, Olanu, you are on your way up, and you start to see, with that huge roll, you start to see uh, something strange, but also familiar to you, specifically. Um, you start to see frozen bodies of different creatures. 
like animal, like a frozen goat, a frozen mountain goat, uh, the a frozen, uh, what the fuck would be up in the mountains? You see a frozen, uh, a dog. another mountain goat, a frozen dog. <laughs> A yeah, dog. I, don't, I don't know. You, you, what the fuck is on the bear, I, I, A frozen uh... cheetah? No, you see a frozen. Uh, you see a frozen. Um, a crag cat. Aha. Okay. Um, a, a couple frozen animals, and you know because of this role that there is probably an ice troll somewhere around. Ooh. And as you scour the area, you see the mouth of a cave opening that un unless searched for kind of just looks like the side of the mountain and because you saw it you of course made sure to avoid it if you would like um, there's probably a ice troll up ahead in a cave if you all would like to investigate. That's cool. Um, however, we should probably just go around. Would it serve your Why? people to clear the mountains of these trolls? I mean, my people can handle their own, but I'm not could sure. We, you know the natural we, order of these trolls, and you know that they don't go out searching for food. They just allow the food to come to them, then they feed, then they do their thing. They're they're not uh, an invasive species. Otherwise, would it be possible? Here. Would it be possible to curry favor if we were to bring the head of an ice troll to your people? Could be a good kill. Maybe. I would say. Um. It's not like. A barbarian uh like it's not like a a um uh ragnar the barbarian type of of a people uh bringing the head of a, a kill or whatever just means that they they only have so much meat to eat on it now um <laughs> less of a um you know a prideful thing more of a survival thing i don't uh, think a troll is really good eating to be honest. Very well. I'm just yeah, I'm just fighting there. between Trey wanting to fight the troll <laughs> and Abel not wanting to. I've seen what happens to those that consume troll flesh. It's never pretty. Come on. Very well. Later round. How I are vote. we doing in this cold, Dan? I, I vote we don't fight the troll. Where <laughs> <laughs> you get to vote? You know, I am kind of here. Oh, damn. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you, uh, what were you saying about something? I, I heard somebody ask a question. How are we doing in this cold? The cold, it's not yet biting. It's, it's, it's cold, but it's not, like, terrible, okay. terrible. But it is the coldest you've ever been. But it is not yet to the point of, uh, you in that snowstorm kind of cold. All right. Uh, so, with that, Alanu... You visibly seeing that this cave is here, choose a different route around, and you start to make your way again upwards. This time, you guys make it up to, like, cloud level. You are essentially getting as far up as you possibly can, and air is getting a little thin. Exactly. <sighs> Coach Burbot. Oh, Pax with the gift sub. You guys are fucking rocking it today. Let's Thank you go. so much for the fucking support. You guys are amazing. Uh, yeah, so go, Coach, coach uh, with the, the, the sub, congratulations, and Pax, thank you very much. You guys make it up to cloud level. The the the, the air is thin. Olano, you're fine. Everybody else is breathing heavily. <laughs> uh, Cuckoo is breathing heavily. Uh, you see the kobolds don't seem to be affected, strangely, um, as they are tucked away in, like, a, a, like reverse baby Bjorn on the back of... Uh, of um, what's her name's back? Uh, Bellini's back. Um, and uh, the the reverse baby Bjorn is essentially just rope that she's tied around them, like in a very uh unforgiving manner, and they just kind of hanging, 
from it. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Jeez. Anyways. Um, Jesus Christ. Oh, so, man, I can't wait till we kill her. She's <laughs> <laughs> really strong, man. She's like, carrying like what, 60 yeah, man. pounds behind her. Hey, it's, it's, it's magic. It's fine. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she, pulls, she pulls her weight. Um, you guys make your way up towards the cloud line, and you finally get through. And as you finally get through, you're expecting it to be like, oh, finally. Break through the clouds. Look up. 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 You'll see a lot of mountains ahead of you. This is about six hours into this climb right now. And you guys are feeling it. It's tough. It's rough. It's hard. But luckily, with Olanu's rolls, you guys are making good time. And with Olanu stating, you know, we're just we're just a little bit more to go. We'll be fine. I'm getting close. Yeah. A little more. You see, <sighs> uh, you see that um, uh, Velany, as uh, as they're going, um, she seems to like be scrunching her nose for a second, and then all of a sudden, <clears throat> as she sneezes, and <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. And oh, then but... suddenly, you start to hear a rumble. <sighs> What could you possibly be allergic to up here? Slowly. It's snow. <laughs> you begin to hear. Okay. Oh, low rumble. Shit. Run! Oh, oh, fuck. You cast look fly. Like, you look, you cast fly. Okay, you can cast fly. You look at, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, oh no. And Ken's like, whoop. <laughs> Just like, it's straight into the air. <laughs> you hear the sounds of what sounds like rumbling, and you look up, and you can see a sheet of snow break away from the mountainside about 500 feet above you. It's about 300 or so feet wide in area and is hurtling now directly towards you. And I need everybody to roll for initiative. Ooh. Oh, oh shit. No. Let's <laughs> go. Why oh, am I roll no. so bad? <laughs> Will I roll because I'm flying? <laughs> uh, no, you do not roll because you're flying. Hey. Sorry, guys. Good luck, Ken says as she flies away. Jesus, that <laughs> avalanche sound is so good. <laughs> hydrate. Yo. Oh, that's a lot of hydrate. It's still going. Big avalanche. I'll say. <clears throat> oh, a face change. Haven't had one of those in a while. You also owe Hoopla one, if I remember correctly. Uh -huh. I Unless you, you sent her bits back. back. I sent her bits back. That's what it was. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, face change. What do you want, Pax? Uh, let's go through the gamut while uh, oh, everybody... Oh, you have it set up? Yep. Oh, God. Hey. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have stuff. Dinosaur. <laughs> we have basically anything you can think of, and I'll try to look it up. What do you want my face to swap to? A fish. Oh no, that's 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 trick. <laughs> I was like, what? What are we doing? Wizard. Um, I know Pax is at work too, so I don't know if he'll be able to type. Okay. Well, we'll give him some time. Uh, and then if he doesn't answer within like the next five minutes, then we'll, uh, I'll uh, return the, the bits to him or, or whatever they are. Channel points. Shards? Okay. No, not Shards. Party. A sti uh, that is true. Down. That is true. We have a sticker party that's, uh, that should be coming soon. This avalanche. Um, yeah. All right. So the avalanche is rough. It's it's tough and tumbling right now towards you, and I need to get everybody's initiative, so let's roll down the line. Uh, first off, we will go with Grimly. What do you get? Four. Four! Excellent! That's a hell of an initiative. Well done, well done. All right. Uh, Abel? 24. That, okay, that's a little bit better. Uh, Leoden? I'm about to fall 2,000 feet. We didn't hear you, Leoden. <laughs> Yeah, the avalanche is actually really loud. Oh, sorry. 18. 18. Oh, 18. 18. 
But anyway, back to impending death. <laughs> uh, Olanu. <laughs> Uh, 16. 16, okay. <laughs> the avalanche rolled in that 20. And he gets times gravity. <laughs> so, the way avalanches work here. Oh, I need to roll for Veleni. Uh, and Leah and Cuckoo's with you. Uh, Veleni, Veleni. Put my luck, guys. Or something. Melanie rolls. I'm rooting for you. Nice! Melanie rolls a six. Oh no. <laughs> that wizard's going over the edge. <laughs> All right. No, so the way, spell book. The way this works is on uh, during an avalanche, the avalanche travels 300 feet every half a round. So huh. by the end of the round, you will be engulfed inside of the avalanche because it is only 500 feet above you with that being said let's go over a few things so da -da, avalanche where you at there it is all right so um the first uh, round um, is going to be Abel, Leoden, and Olanu. You can all try to run out of it uh, using your full movement speed. Uh, and uh, it is currently 300 meters, or excuse me, 300 feet wide. Uh, so you have uh, some ground to cover. Um, you can go 150 feet one way or 150 feet the other way. It doesn't matter. You guys are kind of centered on it. If there was any time to use that Vartex power of yours. Like, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> <laughs> Abel, are we, can we go? Yeah, I mean, you, you're good. Abel, Leoden, and Olanu, it's uh, that order. So. Okay, Abel is going to quickly flash back to a dream he had a while back. He's gonna reach to his side and grab some rope. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna throw it straight up into the sky and it's gonna latch onto something invisible. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to cast a rope trick. Okay. How high is rope trick? It can go up to 60 feet, but I'm going to do 30 feet up. Okay. Uh, you look and you can see that the snow, it's about 30 feet high. I'll do 40 feet up. Okay. <laughs> okay. And um, it opens an extra dimensional space with the rope hanging out of it. And he's just going to start climbing straight up. Follow me. Okay. So, because you have a climb speed, you're just like whoop, 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 up the rope. Yep. Uh, you see, Abel, <laughs> grab a rope, <laughs> throw it in the air, it sticks, and he just starts climbing up. The human ranger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's it is what it is. And Velani goes, didn't know he could do that. Didn't we could do it either. All right, uh, Abel. Your climb speed is 30, correct? It is equal to my walking speed, which is 45 on my first turn. 45. So you can climb all the way up the rope. So you just see Abel whoop, 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 <laughs> fucking like fly up the rope, too. <laughs> he doesn't even use his feet. He does like that cool, like just That's like sick. hand over hand climb. <laughs> all right. Uh, Leoden, no, Leoden, you're up. I'm going to use my mantle of inspiration and okay. uh, on my party. Yeah. Uh, so they can go ahead and use their reaction to move if they'd like. Okay. And up to their full movement speed. And everybody gets uh, eight temporary health just in case. Sure. Um, and. I I guess I'm going to run to the rope and try and climb up it. All right. So because you don't have a climb speed, go ahead and give me a strength athletics check. Uh, I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a flat roll, so maybe I'm not screwed. I forgot You're I'm fine. a bard so and I'm a jack of 20. all trades. Yeah, so you get half proficiency. That's uh, 18. 18? Nice. 
So with that, uh, you can move your movement speed uh, about halfway up the rope. So you get about 15 feet up. Uh, and currently the, the, the snow is hurtling towards you all. All right. Um, that leaves us with the next one. So the next one, I believe, was Olanu, if I'm not mistaken. Therefore, you may go. I am going to... Oh, I apologize. Yeah, they should have been able to use their reaction. No, no, no. no right. This is specifically for you. You use that movement, and now you still have your actual movement to go up as well. So you can yes. continue another 15 feet. So you are uh, yes, please. over 30 feet above the ground now. Cool, and then she can you. move as part of the mantle also, right? That's what that, I mean. The mantle was, was to get to that point. The 15 feet up, and then 15 additional feet for her actual move. Okay, and then she can action dash too if she wanted to. I know. Yeah, I'll dash a little bit if I can just to get <laughs> <laughs> So everybody just like immediately climbs on this rope and then whoop, 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 just fucking quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Bellamy I mean, looks at you I guys have and done some hold acrobatics. Hold this, Bell that yeah. would make sense for sure. I mean, because you're—I mean, you're a lot lighter too, considering the, the the load of weapons and stuff like that that everybody else is carrying. Um, you 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 make your way up, and Bellamy's like, "Can everybody do this?" <laughs> yes. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she kind of looks at you, and you're just like, "Uh oh." Uh, a lot of three hundred pounds, and I have armor on. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, she's going to go for the rope, because that's the fastest way out of this. Okay, so strength situation. athletics. She's also going to rage so that she gets advantage. <laughs> sure, yeah, I mean, you have advantage survival this rage. The survival rage. No, you're just pissed that Bellany sneezed, knowing that you could definitely <laughs> set off in a, a fucking avalanche here. Avalanche. You just push her off the rope. So that's a 23. <laughs> okay. So you move, no problem, up 15 feet originally, or initially. Uh, 20. 20 feet, because you got 40. Ooh. So you're up 20. Now and you then have... action. Action and uh, movement up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you guys are now ba basically all hugging each other at the top of this rope. Uh, Alanu basically, like, kind of encompassing both of your bodies, uh, all hanging from the top, uh, leaving Grimly and uh, uh, Bellany. Uh, at the bottom here. Uh, Ken, what are you doing? How much weight can this thing hold? It actually opens up into an extra dimensional space that can hold eight medium creatures. Mm -hmm. Are you going yep, so inside? I'll be on the rope. I just heard everyone's climbing in. the rope. I'm going, I'm going in. I'm inside. Oh, no, okay. we're all going in. Okay. And I'm just reaching down, helping pull people up. Okay. So as soon as you guys, um, uh, you know, get to this point, um, Ken, all you see from your vantage point is literally them climbing this rope till the end and then disappearing into space and time. <laughs> um, with my mantle, I'll try to start. Um, sure. I'm gonna assume that Bellany gets to go first because she rolled higher than me on initiative. So if she yep. starts climbing, I'll be behind her. Yep, okay. Uh, she didn't get the, the bonus movement speed, so she will uh, attempt to climb the rope here. Rolls a six, so she gets to the oh, bottom yeah. and she's like, what the hell? How did you guys? <laughs> and she looks up and uh, she takes one of her kobolds and like swings it, like grabs it and swings it in the air, trying to get it to grab onto the rope. Grab the rope, you dummy. I, and it, um... it just starts to like swing in the air. And all the world, <laughs> she'll come within 30 feet, well, no, 40 feet of where the avalanches come in. Mm-hmm. Just to sort of get ready, and like in case Grimly can't make it up the rope in time, she's gonna just <laughs> wait there to help him out. Okay. So, um, excellent. Bellany is is struggling at the bottom of the rope. Grimly, what are you doing? Um, let you me... have you have now seen, by the way, since Bellany uh, and Grimly, you're going now. Uh, you have now seen that the avalanche has moved three hundred feet towards you all. Okay. Um, am I behind or in front of Velany on the rope? Uh, well, you are in front of her because you could use your bonus action to move immediately. Okay. If, if you end um, up making it up. So I need you to make a strength athletics yeah. check to get it, to get going. You got it. Uh, it's cocked. Okay. Yeah. Um, easily done at a 19. 
19. So you start making your way up. You're about, uh, what, uh, 15 feet up? Uh, my movement speed's 25 feet, so if it's halved, yeah. we'll just round 10. it. We'll just round it. Okay. We're saying 15. Grimley's gonna look down at Velony, look back up, close his eyes at this avalanche coming at him, and cast Misty Step. Whoa! Ooh. And as the avalanche comes towards him, we'll just say for anim for visuals that he closes his eyes and uh, gets surrounded in gold and then disappears and shoots yes. to the top of the rope. You see Velani was like holding her hand out like towards you, like when you did that. And she's <laughs> oh, just like no. her mouth um, just kind of stays open. In that case, I'm going to have Kinrava come down and like try and pick Velani up. Well, well, considering the movement speed right now, what happens is you start to fly towards her, but it seems that the avalanche is moving faster than you. The avalanche, he looks up towards it, the rope and her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A 30-foot wall of snow encompasses Velani, the rope, and everything. You guys are looking down through the extra dimensional, extra dimensional portal that you have created, and snow is just beginning to kind of like fill inside of the portal. And you can't see anything below you anymore. It's gone. Um. Okay. Well, I need to roll. We had a high-level wizard. <laughs> Try to see her. See if you can see her. <laughs> Damage roll. Oh, this reminds me of Mulan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're just going to find her arm sticking out about the. Okay. <laughs> he takes 19 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. Sorry about it. Ain't left the old woman down there? Yes. The, the wall <laughs> of snow continues to make its way down the mountain, but after about a minute, the snow has subsided to the point of it stopped. The hole is covered with snow. Uh, and in Rava, you of course can make any attempts now at this point, since the avalanche has subsided, to do whatever you like. You are flying above the snow. Everybody else, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find any trace of where Valany was. Okay. Um, how close is the snow to the portal that we're in? Literally Has covering it. it. Okay. Yeah, like so literally there is, there is no gap between snow and portal. The snow is actually kind of like even overfilling it a little bit, creating a little mound. <laughs> great, great, great. Love that. We're just going to die in this extra dimensional space. It's a dig. Uh, so Ken, um, hold on. Uh, can you see nothing in terms of like positional wise where she would be currently? I'm gonna pop out of the snow, see if anybody's around. I know the others made it, but Kinrava is floating there. Mm -hmm. Knowing that Bellany just got destroyed, I'm going to cast locate object. On what? And just uh Bellany's shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Got a good look at that shirt, huh? All right. Oh yeah, he's always staring. Sure at some point. Yep. <laughs> Her eye patch. I don't know. Hey, she might be a, a, a necromancer, but she's uh, she's stacked. So. Oh god. <laughs> Her book. No. <laughs> okay. It's up to you. Whatever you want. If, if if it's a yeah. shirt, yeah, we'll just say you can. I don't give a shit about easily. that book. I know Ken Rob does, but I'm gonna look for her. <laughs> so yeah, on her. Her okay. shirt or something. Yeah, no problem. Um, so you cast it, and she seems to be. Uh, what is the range? A thousand feet. A thousand. Yeah, she seems to be about uh, three hundred feet down the mountain. Jesus Christ. Uh. <laughs> uh, you, but you, you, you are still in the extra dimensional space. Um, you're gonna need to dig out of the space first to start your yeah. search. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm. Uh, I, I'm gonna. Okay. Come okay. out. And we'll then... say you're, you're going to take about a minute or so to dig yourself out of the hole. 
and you can help Olano everything that takes you all about a minute to get completely uncovered and out of the, the space. Uh, yeah, rope trick lasts for an hour, so we're good. Finally, uh, Ken, as you are searching around, uh, you see uh, what looks to be a, uh, a dead kobold um, that is currently just sticking halfway out of the snow. Of course. She'll fly down and start digging since she assumes that's also where Veleny is. Yep. Uh, the kobold, as soon as you arrive, kind of like turns to you and like gives like a <laughs> like growl. <laughs> but you start to dig around it. Um, and as you're digging, the, the first thing you see is like a hand kind of like reaching up out of the snow. And Rob will reach down and grab it and try and pull her out. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, roll, a right? strength, roll a strength check for me real quick. Oh, yeah. I'm great at these. <laughs> you got it. We'll, get, we'll give you Just with advantage. High. We'll give you with advantage as the uh, kobold attempts to help you. I need it. That was a zero. <laughs> Hell yeah. That That's... means I think it was a nat one. Yeah. That's a 17 when I take it away. So Nice. Okay. Uh, so with the kobolds the co doing all the work, I'm just <laughs> helping. <laughs> with the kobolds' help, uh, you reach down and grab Veleni's arm and begin to pull her out of the snow. And she finally gets out of the snow and just lays down on her back, and she's like, What? How did you all climb so fast? <laughs> and Rob will use prestidigitation to, like, get rid of the snow on her, like, clothes and such, and just be like, Ugh, I... Oof. A few minutes you pass. Right. Yeah, <laughs> she's, she seems fine. A little banged and bruised, but uh, other than that, she seems okay. Um, she seems a little exhausted through the fight, uh, having to stay alive uh, for the time she did, but other than that, she's fine. Uh, minus the bits and bruises a little bit. So after a few minutes, you guys end up digging yourselves out, and you can see Ken Rava walking back with Felony from... The base, like almost through the clouds yet again, like up to where you guys are. Uh, Veleni looks to be bruised. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. The kobolds are trapped to her back again. Turn to Abel and just say thank you and walk away. Um, Veleni turns to uh, Grimly um, and uh, she says, she looks at you and she goes, Strange. Thought you would have helped me back there. After she catches up the 300 feet above. Yeah, of course, after she gets back uh, after, up to you yeah. guys. Um, there wasn't much time to, to act. I apologize. Self preservation. I understand. So and she kind of like like kind of like disgustingly very Kinrava like kind of like rolls her eyes and like continues to walk on where she was I think one of your kobolds just, lost its tail she looks at it and she's like look. no he's always been missing <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll approach her as she starts to walk off this are you hurt Oh. <laughs> she doesn't even like turn back around. Like she's just heading up the mountain. She doesn't turn around. She's like, I'm fine. All right. Are any of you hurt? Is she going in the right direction? Uh, <laughs> no. It's this way, Melanie. <laughs> she doesn't acknowledge you and she just turns and walks the, the right direction. <laughs> You'd think, as a wizard, she would have more ability to protect herself in situations like this. Uh, uh, well, if you hadn't have bamped out of there, you would have seen her like put up her arm and put up a little shield before getting demolished. Um, but other than that, no, she can't just fly around at whim <laughs> like, uh, like our other friend yeah. here. I just look at Kinrava and I'm like, impressed. And Rava's just uh, smirking right now, but the moment Valony like glances towards them, her face goes back to neutral. Sure. All right. And with that, you crest over the next ridge, and you see in front of you a large cavern-like entrance. 
accompanied by a palisade of such in front of it, with a step up on a ledge. Olanu, you know this location yes. as your home. You have reached what looks to be Sky Tower Shelter. Directly in front of you is a ice hewn uh um stone I'm sorry, a ice hewn stairway that kind of leads up all the way towards the entrance of the cave. Above you in the uh, not in the clouds, above you in the sky, you can see what look to be like shadows of uh creatures covering and blotting out some stars as they fly by. And you note that you can see about two or three griffins just kind of floating above head. And then one lands on a perch, kind of on the upper part of the cavern in front of you. As it looks so down upon Percy you guys. out. Percy uh, kind of pokes its head out and looks around. Oh, this is so cool! Oh. And Giant, <laughs> she'll tell him, go be with your people. Percy doesn't even, like, stutter, doesn't do anything. You can see it, it makes its way out of the pouch, takes all four of its paws and puts them on your shoulders releases and then jumps with its back feet as it uh, flies up into the sky and kind of disappears amongst the stars. Nice. From a distance. <clears throat> Go ahead. Do your thing. She'll start walking forward. Mm -hmm. To get uh, to a safe distance um, where she knows that uh, they won't react uh, hostily before yep. declaring herself. So as you guys get there, uh, the the sound of like squawking can be heard from the, the griffins above you, almost like a sentry like uh, alarm. And from a distance, you can hear like it before you even reach the point of being able to visually confirm what's up, up there. You can hear an echoing kind of like booming voice, like a booming voice that says, turn back. You are not welcome here. As it kind of echoes through the cavern or through the uh, mountain. Uh, in giant, she's going to respond. I am Alanu Iceheart Akanathi. I am welcome. Kind of a bit of silence. And then from a distance, you can see it's about like Sick. 15 or 20 feet up angled wise. At the top of this icy staircase, approaches a huge Goliath male. And uh, this is, of course, Rockfist. Um, Iron, uh, Iceheart, what uh, does Rockfist look like? Oh, shit. Uh, so before you stands a nearly eight foot tall Goliath, chiseled with muscle. Uh, he is a warrior through and through. He holds himself as such. Uh, there is no hair on his head. Uh, his eyes are dark and steely when he gazes upon everybody. Um, over his shoulders is a brown uh, fur mantle that seems to mark his place as being important. Um, he is clad in um, dark leathers, um, and he carries a great axe, similar to what Alanu has. You see him Here's with better. <clears throat> you see him with great axe in hand, kind of like letting it drag behind him a bit, and then when he gets to his position of like kind of looming down over you, he places it on his shoulder, and you. Talks his head to the side and says, Ice Heart, you've returned. Rockfist. I have. You've brought friends. Yes. I know they are not like us, but they are honorable. Will you allow them entry? He kind of looks behind him. Like nods his head. Yes. But you are responsible for them as they are here. Absolutely. Um, I will say 
And she's saying this completely in giant. Like, she yeah, yeah, yeah. is not speaking common. All of this is in um, giant, by the way. Okay. <laughs> uh, she kind of nods her head towards Veleny. That one. I would keep a watchful eye on. She's not... I would not call her friend. Veleny looks at you and, like, squints her eyes and frowns. And then she, she like, looks up at the chief. Enough. He says, Come, out of the cold. I'm sure it is not pleasant for you, non-giant folk. And Rava's going to lean over towards Veleny and just say, She was warning them about the undead. <laughs> Did he just invite roll, us in and comment? deception. Or... Was Real that quick. still in giant? Uh, that would still be in giant, so she would have to kind of translate. Let me see. Deception. That is a 22. Okay. She looks at you and she's like, maybe I've misunderstood. All right. The record can Rava can't understand giant. She's just saying this. <laughs> So did you? Okay. She you saw her understand... nod towards. She saw her nod towards Veleni, and Veleni sort of narrow her eyes a bit. So why don't she you? Sort of... Why don't you go ahead and roll a intelligence check then, just to see if you can suss out the situation without knowing what she said. Twenty-four. You understand completely. Um. <laughs> so yeah, with with that body language, you've been around Olanu enough to where you you can tell what her facial expressions mean and stuff like that. So. Um, you understand. And, uh, without a second guess, she's like, oh, okay, yeah, I totally misunderstood. And, uh, you guys start making your way up. Now, I will lead you to... Oh? Oh, we got a home map. Map. Let me find it. There you are. Now we can judge the decorations, you guys. Oh, totally. And uh, is it all is it all dark for you? Man, it's dark up here. Yeah, it's dark. Okay. Uh, Man, let dark. me reveal. It is nighttime. <laughs> all right, let me just. Is... Hold map. Boom. How long have we been climbing now? By the way. Oh, just kidding. Uh, you guys are currently at around ten hours. Oh God. Be sore reveal? in the morning. <laughs> Why you no know reveal? Uh, map overlay, baby. area. Oh, oh fuck. Well, we might can have death by Suzu. I think that's supposed to be Snoo Snoo. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, one second. I don't get it. Did you ever watch Future Rama? <laughs> a little right. bit, yeah. Okay, there There's we go. There we go. There we go. Episode where they go to a planet of basically Amazon oh, what's happening warriors. Right now? And oh, yeah. uh, it's the Amazonia. They you know uh, <laughs> sentence all the dudes to death by sex. No. <laughs> they call it snoo snoo. <laughs> How did all your that. men die? Crushed pelvises. <laughs> there we go. I you should that have so vision long. now. Damn. Look at this place. They are Sick. living it up out here. Okay. Look at those birds way down there. The so, fuck? Are those Nests everywhere. Let me drag you guys in real quick. Uh, chat, can you guys see what's going on? No, you guys are kind of like weirdly off centered here. Give me a second. Bloop. Oh, I'm so tiny. You are a dwarf. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> fix this to where you guys can see a little bit better. That's all this the place way. This place is huge. Over. Are those griffin nests? Mm, might be. Oh my god. Okay. Don't play coy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys over token wise to the map here. So that way we just kind of get an idea of where you guys are. Oh, currently so tiny. Yeah, you guys are all I tiny for, for no reason here. Hold on. I'm trying to make it bigger. There's two Grimleys, FYI. 
Oh, I'll delete mine. Oop, why is it? Oh, here we go. Uh, is there two Grimleys? No, no he deleted it. Oh. We can drag our own tokens in if if that ever helps. Yeah, no, no just worries. So I know. just gotta upsize them. Uh, Alana and Alana, you are not a drawing. <laughs> there we go. There. Okay, so we are where we are. You guys approach the palisade and you can see on the upper level, there are currently five uh, other Goliath warriors that are like with spears at the ready, kind of like ready to go. And then they see Chieftain uh, Rockfist kind of heading back up. Uh, the staircase and um, move past one of the barricades leading you guys in. The rest of the warriors kind of settle themselves and bring their um, their weapons down. And you see Rockfist kind of lift his hands up and he says, um, uh, Iceheart has returned. And uh, the rest of them kind of like look over and trying to look over uh, Rockfist's arms and sees Olanu kind of sneaking up now up the staircase behind them and uh you see smiles kind of like come up on a few of their faces and then a few of them like run down and start to give uh olanu kind of a big old welcome hug welcome home hug um go ahead she'll kind of uh converse with them uh kind of joking about like oh look at you i can't believe you're still alive um, yeah, exactly. Th yeah, there's definitely a bit of banter back and forth. They're like, we thought you were dead. Not yet. They're like, so how's, uh, you know, how's humanoid life treating you or something like that? You know what I mean? How's They're the towns? So too self-interested to think of glorious battle. Not like us. They're like, you haven't gone soft on us, have you? <laughs> one of them kind of like off that armor one, I was about to say one of them jabs you on the shoulder like immediately like sending you reeling back for a second and it immediately sends you back into yeah. like like Akinathy like this is it and you fucking wallop him go ahead and give me a strength check oh I'm not gonna rage okay <laughs> well, I throw it on the ground natural 20 oh, let's go <laughs> She's home. <laughs> Dude, okay. So they wallop That's you on nice. the shoulder kind of like uh, playfully and they're like, oh, she's gone soft. And then suddenly you like reel back and fucking nail him directly in the center of the chest, sending him flying like three feet back and then on his ass. And everybody's like, yeah, <laughs> and, like starts to cheer. And Rock Fist, you can see like him shaking his head and he's like, it's like you never left. I've missed this. And he's like, come, your mother and father would want to see you. Yes. And uh, he leads you guys all kind of inwards towards the uh, inner sanctum of this cave. Uh, the cave uh, walls, or I'm sorry, the cave uh, ceiling is about um, like 15 to 20 feet high, uh, allowing some space for the, the Goliaths to walk through um, with ease. Uh, and there is a good amount of space uh, to the walls as well. Um, and you assume it allows space for any of the uh, griffins if they choose to uh, walk through. Um, you do see a bunch of like uh, nests, uh, half made um, nests that are currently unoccupied uh, and, and just kind of sporadically placed around. Um, as you enter the, the center chamber, um, you see a fire that is a light in the center, uh, the center area, and you see a, a an individual uh, that is sitting next to the fire. Olanu, you know this as Cloud Strider. What does Cloud Strider oh. look like? Uh, so, well, uh, Cloud Strider is still a Goliath. He probably stands about seven and a half feet tall. Um, he has a slightly thinner muscled build uh, than um, Rockfist, uh, and even than Alanu. Um, he, instead of wearing the darker leathers, um, he actually has kind of a mix of blues and whites uh, in his, and 
um, over his shoulders there is a uh, gray uh, mantle, uh, still much larger, um, kind of signifying a place of importance. Um, oddly enough, unlike the rest of the males that you have seen, he has a single strip of black hair that is pulled back into a ponytail with a gold clasp holding it in place. And when she, when Alano notices that, she kind of raises an eyebrow uh, at him. But other than that, he looks like the rest. He's, yeah, he's just a little bit thinner than you would expect. But. So as you uh, approach, um, of course, uh, Rockfist leading you in, uh, Rockfist walks over to Cloud Strider and Cloud Strider kind of like sits up, like knowingly seeing the rest of the group and then stands up and gives a like uh, a shake where he grabs the elbow of uh, Rockfist and Rockfist grabs his and they kind of, um, you know, hold each other like arms and everything like that. And then they closely uh, embrace like um, with like uh, Cloud Strider's like uh, neck over um, Rockfist's shoulder. Uh, allowing him to look directly at the party behind Rockfist. And then he kind of like tilts his head uh, and he looks over and he's like, Olanu, is that you? What? What brings you back so soon? And he kind of breaks the, 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 the hug with uh, Rockfist. We can talk of what brings us back here in a moment. But uh, that's new. And she points to his hair. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The potions finally work. He goes, I, I see you noticed. Um, he, uh, as he's like about to start uh, oyster, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, kind of going on about it and, and kind of giving uh, a, a speech about how it's, it's glorious. Um, Stormcrow exits from one of the side chambers towards you. Uh, an older woman. But what does Stormcrow look like? Uh, so... You see uh, an older female. Um, she is every bit as tall as uh, Rockfist. Um, and every bit as strong you would not know that this was an elderly woman had she not had wrinkles um, a, on the corners of her eyes and near her mouth. Um, she also carries a great axe with her um, and she is clad in darker leathers with a dark uh, black mantle over her shoulders. She approaches out of the cave and you can see she is accompanied by a large white rag cat that is kind of like slowly slumping next to her and walking as they enter the room. And she goes, stop talking about your hair, Cloud Strider. Nobody cares. And he's like, he turns and he's like, ah. And uh, he kind of goes to introduce and he's like, uh, Stormcrow, uh, come. Uh, Iceheart has made her way back. And Stormcrow exits the the, the chamber, uh, and she seems like this big, uh, like um, ready to com combat anybody. Um, structure just comes out of the the chamber, and stands like even a couple inches taller than uh, than Cloud. Or, I'm sorry, than Sto um, Cloud Strider himself. He makes his way over, or she makes her way over. Excuse me, and uh, she goes over to you. Um, uh, Olanu, and she kind of starts to, like, look you over. She says, You've lost weight. Which is not a I good need, thing. I need to get back in the ring with you. She, like, grabs your, your, uh, your bicep and starts to kind of squeeze on your bicep, and she's like, Well, we'll have to see then, won't we? Absolutely. And that look of like, like uh, judgment slowly fades away to a smile and she holds out her arm. And take it. And you clasp arms with her and give her like a, a nice um, embrace. And uh, you see 
Rock Fist and Cloud Strider are both like uh, almost like side hugging as they watch and they are just like smiling large. And uh, you see Rock Fist go, oh, oh, and he leaves the room for a moment. And then uh, moments later, you see um, a another individual walking in. Uh, but this time it is, uh, um, it is a male Goliath. Um, and this is Strong Bear. Alanu, <laughs> as soon as she notices her father into the room, she takes off running at him and just leaps up at him, giving him a huge hug. You see him, like, prepare himself, like, you know, like a football tackle is about to come. And then you jump and leap in the air as these two giant Goliaths meet and, like, mash each other in the air and uh, he kind of grabs you like along the back of the butt or like kind of like around the waist and lifts you up and twirls you around and places you back on the ground he's like ice heart how have you been i have i have brought great honor on us oh i bet you have kiddo what have you done me and th these wonderful people we Save the Ten Towns. We killed a large crystalline dragon. <laughs> Don't know what that is. <laughs> Kenny, he like hits it on, hits you on the shoulder. He's like, uh, I'm sure it's great though. And he goes, oh, welcome. Any friends of Olanu are friends of mine. Uh, what brings you back here though? Uh, hold on, let me go get your mother. Need... And he like immediately uh... like just forgets about what he says. It just runs away. Sorry, he's like that sometimes. He's like, uh, yeah, and the, the chieftain like kind of looks at you all and he's like, it's uh, almost time for rest. Uh, you care to join us in a ceremonial dinner? I assume we'll throw one now that you've come. That'd be amazing. And she'll translate for everybody else. <laughs> he, he <laughs> she realizes see, that this entire kinda, time. <laughs> well, then he sees you do this. He sees you translate back to them and like with everything that you're that he's saying. And he's like, oh, uh, uh, and then he, you see him like, <clears throat> and he looks up into the air. Hello. Uh, welcome to home. Um, I tower. Ice heart. Uh, daughter. And he obviously gets daughter wrong, kind of mixed up with like daughter of the tribe kind of thing. And he's like, um, uh, food? Yes. <laughs> Ale. Oh, no. Ale. Uh, uh, well, sort of. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think you mean thank hell. <laughs> and so... Uh, at this point, you guys start making your way into the feasting chambers, and as you guys enter, uh, there is a large um, game kind of going on between two members uh, of the Goliath um, tribe here. Uh, as you enter, you can see uh, a long rectangular fire pit heats this 15-foot high cave and fills the area with the scent of meat cooking on a grate over the pit. The sound of cheering also fills the cave as two Goliaths stand near the southern wall with their arms extended out from their sides, holding a large rock in each of their hands. Their arm muscles are quivering from exertion and their jaws are clenched. Seven more Goliaths stand around them, cheering and waving haunches of cooked meat. When the Goliaths spot you guys all enter the room, the cheering is like immediately stopped. The competition ends and the two Goliaths let their rocks tumble to the floor and all nine Goliaths like glare at the party. And one of them like speaks up. Are you hard? She'll glance. And you see one person that wasn't like visible at first, kind of like part the, the group. Um, and you see standing in front of you uh, that one guy. That one guy. <laughs> that I totally remember the name of. Uh, yep. 
Mm-hmm. What was his name? I told you my forgot. favorite guy. Strong striker. That is that? That's who? Yep. Okay. Uh -huh. Then carry That's on. Okay. What does strong striker look like? Uh like most of the Goliath males, he yes. has the gray skin, the dark markings, no hair. Um He's tall. He's definitely a warrior. Um, he's clad in um, leathers. Um, he has um, swords at his hips instead of carrying like a great weapon um, of some sort. Um, he would seem a little more grizzled, worn, since the last time Alanu had seen him. Um, and he has new scars that weren't there before. Um, but he's fairly young. Uh, he's not aged. Um, he seems to be probably about the same age as Alanu. And he stands slightly taller than she is at about seven foot five. Or, or yeah, seven foot five. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the, uh, the Goliaths kind of spread, uh, spread out as he walks forward. And he just, he <laughs> kind of like shakes his head. And he goes, I didn't know if the rumors were true. And he just kind of like slowly approaches you, and um, and he just kind of walks up and like looks you up and down, and he goes, "You look great. Look better than you." <laughs> he chuckles, and uh, he goes, "Polar bear," <laughs> as he points to like one next uh, one on his arm. Or, like, pulls back her coat and, like, just starts showing, like, all of the scars and oh, yeah. the shit that she's for got. The next, for the next <laughs> couple minutes, uh, the scars, like, uh, kind of come back and, the, and they're talking and everything like that. Uh, and then uh, coming back into the room, like, bounding into the room and then kind of, like, slipping on the steps up to the to the area, uh, you see the, the, the same Goliath that uh, was there previously as her father kind of, like, slips on the ice and then, like, slides into the room and then stands up immediately. Um, and then he he kind of look, like looks with a smile on his face towards the door and uh, standing inside the doorway or the cave entrance to the this area, uh, you see a very familiar face as uh, Sky Dreamer enters the room. What does Sky Dreamer look like? Uh, so in strides a tall woman about the same height as Alanu. Um, she is also well-muscled, but not as much as Alanu and her father. Um, she's a bit leaner. Um, the sides of her head are shaved, and down the center she has several braids, um, that are pulled back until they're let loose into a ponytail. Um, she also has, um, like, scratches and things like that up her arm from years of tending the griffins, um, and there is a bow slung over her shoulder and a quiver. You see that she walks in and when she does, she is carrying in tote Percy as uh, as Percy is like perched on her uh, her shoulder. And uh, she uh, gives like a and Percy whoosh, flies back over to you uh, and lands kind of like directly in front of your feet and just kind of circles you and like looks around very excited uh, to be in this location. And um, she looks. Oh, go ahead. Just letting you know the chat can only see your notes. They can't see ah, the map. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I it happened again. Too. Yep, I gotta bring that out. Let me see if this helps. Um let me, let me, let me. One second. Uh what I'll do is I'll just pop the notes out. That way they don't keep interrupting. Okay, you guys should just see map now. Mm -hmm. Um her response to her mother is much more uh tame and measured um she um, walks calmly yeah her mother like when she kind of enters the doorway or whatever just holds out her arms and just kind of like gives like a she'll walk over and she'll give her mom a hug she gives you like the the traditional you know arm slap handshake and then goes in for a hug um you see that she uh she looks to be uh, a little um worn out uh from training today uh and um she says um Good to see you, Alanu. Safe and Good sound. To see you as well. 
Yes. Uh, well, seems introductions are in order. Uh, why don't we, why don't we go ahead and sit down and have a meal? Yes. And uh, she goes. I see Percy has been trained a little bit. Yes, uh, we're working on getting him ready for battle. She says, it's a uh, little overdue, isn't it? Yeah. I was really she, focused on she kinda, being a strong. She kind of like scolds you on your your lack of training uh, with the, the griffin. Um, then, as uh, you all kind of gather around, uh, a couple of the Goliaths um, uh, begin to start to lift the rocks up again, and everybody seems to be conversing together, and uh, they bring in a large haunch of meat uh, that begins to, like, cook on the, the center table. And everybody sits around the center table preparing to eat. And uh, for the purposes of this, we're going to play Leoden's theme. Just because, why not? Even though it doesn't necessarily go along with things. <laughs> kind of fits the food a little bit. Um, all right. So uh, as things get set up, um, you see that uh, they bust out some, like, old traditional instruments that are very much percussion. Uh, some sort of drum and some sort of, like, uh, skin that they are um, pounding against. Uh, in order to make uh, a couple notes <laughs> and kind of fill the air with a bit of music. Uh, but it's mostly a jovial kind of get-together. Um, so, get quick. <clears throat> Lost by Cat in the morning. Here we go. All right, so uh, everybody, you may, of course, take a seat around the uh, the fire pit. Uh, there are no chairs, just uh, two large stone benches um, that are on either side of the, the bench top there. Uh, and you're free to converse. Uh, she'll take the time to introduce everybody um, and translate where necessary for those who don't speak uh, common. Um, during this time, they take time to make fun of the fact that you're hanging out with uh, non-giants. Um, they make sure that, uh, you know, it maybe feels a little uncomfortable for your party, um, as they're not used to uh, strangers around here. Um, they purposely, like, uh, spill a drink in front of uh, Leoden um, and uh, see, just like, just to see what her reaction would be. Alana will uh, look down and like, punch him. All right. I hit the person <laughs> that spilled the drink in front of me. Roll a strength athletics, please. Yes. Let's hope I roll high. That's a nat 20? Of course it is! Oh. Two nat 20s to punch these Goliaths! <laughs> so, the... The immature uh, Goliath who spelt the drink in front of you um, is currently like turned sideways and laughing with his friends. Uh, and you take that opportunity to literally just like reel back and clock him across the jaw. And he kind of goes like reeling a little bit from the hit, but not like far. Just like, boom, and just like slowly kind of like turns his head back to you. And everybody shuts up for a moment. And it, Alani is just standing behind her with her arms crossed. It seems crossed. like a fucking mistake. Like, <laughs> you probably just initiated combat. Um, <laughs> but after a, uh, a, like a couple seconds, you see that the people that was were laughing with him start to like make fun of him and like grab him and like pat him on the back. Like, ha ha, you idiot, you got punched by her. And everybody starts to have more fun. And he, you can see like a smile like kind of creep across his face as he looks at Leoden and like rubs his chin. Uh... Can I play with them? As in, like, play Instrumentally. With them. <laughs> ah, 
Um. Yeah. I well, don't be think offensive. you. No. It'll just listen to the rhythm of the drums. I'm sure you're good at that. Yeah. I would like to go play with the Goliath. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, death by snoo snoo. Fine. All right. <laughs> you go and play with the Goliaths. Uh, go ahead and roll me Most a performance. Most odd circle, way please. to die. <laughs> let's see. What, what's that plus again? Oh, Probably okay. twenty. I don't oh, know. Oh, plus thirty-five. It's a twenty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they originally, as you walk up, uh, see you pulling out the uh, the mandolin, and kind of like. Uh, look at you curiously as they continue to play, but they look at you curiously and the first strum of the mandolin like sets their eyes like open, like, oh shit, like wasn't expecting that. And then uh, you begin to play. And as you play, it turns the heads of pretty much everybody uh, as they kind of give you a listen and everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. Um, awesome. So uh, go ahead. Um, you can go ahead and uh, take uh, a uh, an inspiration. Ooh. Ooh. As, as you play along with the Goliaths. I stopped. Yes, Ken. Why don't you tell them a lot about the victories you've had recently? If you'd like, I can even use some magic to actually show them what their victories looked like in the air. Yeah, that, that would be great. Um... So she's going to explain to them, uh, basically, uh, Inrava is an amazing uh, wizard. Uh, she wants to put on a show of sorts with her magic uh, to kind of show you the things that we have accomplished. They kind of look around confusing, like confused. It doesn't necessarily make sense to them. You'll see, you'll see. It's, it's, she's really good at this stuff. Um, and then she'll go on to describe, um, kind of how they met in the tavern, um, or in the blades, um, and set out from there to... You're damn right we didn't meet in a tavern, all right? Sorry. We're, be we're better than that. We're better than that. <laughs> um, how they met in the, t in the blades, um, they went on a, a journey, took on a whole bunch, she elaborates here, a whole army of goblins um, and they were just <laughs> knocking them out left and right um, they managed to save the goods and get back in time to collect a reward only that stupid dwarf was so um, like penny pinching uh, that he didn't do that much but uh, All grimly right. and she points over to him <laughs> yeah, and like he goes on a long that. time yeah go ahead again <laughs> While she's doing that, Kinrab was going to cast Major Image in the air to actually use the illusion magic to show everything that yeah, Iceheart is saying. Sure. And including just for her a little bit of her elaborations sure. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, your embellishments <laughs> on the story uh, definitely go with, uh, with what you're saying, you know, what is being seen. Uh, but because it is a lie, Go ahead and roll a deception with advantage due to <laughs> Kinrava's help, real quick. Okay. Here's it's kind of like a white lie. Right, deception. Amazing. Okay. This is great. Uh, 17. 17. Okay. So you know, it's like you see a couple of the bar of the uh the goliaths like looking at each other like they fought a dragon like <laughs> i mean it's not a lie <laughs> yeah I, but of all things they're like yeah okay like a, an army of uh, of goblins sure but like a dragon really that's what they think is the falsity they can't they can't depict what's actually being lied about here so they're they're just picking the bigger thing anyways uh they seem to love it it goes off without a hitch um then your father uh, speaks to you during, you know, after the the, the whole meetup and the, the talk and everything like that. Your father comes over to you. Your mother sits next to your, your you know, your side. Uh, across the table is, uh, of course, um, the guy who I can never remember the name of. Strong Striker. Yep, Strong Striker. 
I need to highlight that. <laughs> there we go. Um, Strong Striker is across the table. Strong Striker seems to be engulfed in what you're saying. You know, everything you're saying, he's just like, yeah, fuck yeah, that's awesome. Um, and uh, your mom and dad, though, sit next to you, and your dad starts to speak, and he says, that all oh, seems amazing, uh, Iceheart. I'm so glad that, uh, you know, your training and everything has gone off without a hitch, and it seems that you're stronger than ever. <laughs> but uh, what really brings you back? Uh, did you solve what you had set out to do? No. But I think that the Akhenathi can help with that. Your mother chimes in. How? We need to cross. Moving ice. The Thank sea you. of moving ice. We need to cross the sea of moving ice. And the only way that we can think of doing it is with the help of the Griffins. Your mother's eyes get like super wide for a moment. Like, that was kind of like unexpected for her. Um, and she kind of takes a moment and she's like, how are there Griffins supposed to help? It is possible for them to fly us over. If you allow it, I might need a bigger one than they do. She kind of like looks at you and she's like, Griffins aren't normally for writing. Hold on, you know this. I know. But it's either that or a mythical whale creature that may not actually exist. And, uh, your dad kind of like looks around and he's like, come on, we got to help her out. And kind of like, uh, you know, hits you on the shoulder. And he, he's like, if she's to achieve this, uh, maybe we can do something to help. And she, uh, you see that he is um, uh, currently looking over at the head of the table, which Rock Fist is currently sitting at. Um, and he says, uh, hold on, hold on. As he holds his arms up, um, everybody, it seems that Olanu and her, her friends here, uh, they might be in need of our assistance. Rockfist's eyes kind of like narrow, and he's like, what could that be, then? We seek to end the eternal winter. In the, order to do... The, uh, the, the music kind of comes to a stop when you say that. Nobody else is playing, to... and I stop. <laughs> yeah, Leiden gets a little bit of a late note. <laughs> in... <laughs> we need to cross the sea of moving ice. To do so, we humbly ask for the assistance of the Akhenathi Griffins. You hear like a like a lot of muttering. Now. There's like a ton of muttering between a lot of the Goliaths. Um, even uh, 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 Strong Striker, <laughs> <laughs> even Strong Striker um, seems to kind of like um, look like that's a lot to ask. Um, and uh, they all look in the direction of the chief at this point. Um, and Rock Fist kind of holds up one hand, kind of calming the crowd. Rockfist kind of looks over and he says, What makes you think the Griffins will join you on your journey? I have great respect for them. I wish to offer that to them in return for their aid. With the help of the spirits, I can converse with them. They are our sacred creatures, and they don't leave the nest often. I understand. And he kind of look, looks down. And he looks at his husband and looks back over at you. He looks back and says, You need to prove yourselves as warriors. 
if we are to release any griffins in your custody. Olanu has spent many years with these creatures, and barely has she proven her worth to them. Her companion, Percy, has been proof of this, but you've seen how wild these creatures can be. Once you prove yourself, then we will have this conversation once more. Thank you for the opportunity. Everybody starts conversing again. And they Was that they, in common or did Alanu quickly tell us what was going on? That was like in broken common, like you caught like, you know, every third word kind of thing. But you got the gist. Um as this is going on though, you see uh Stormcrow and Cloudstrider speaking to each other. Um and Stormcrow looks over at Rockfist and Stormcrow is like whispering a little bit at Rockfist. And then Rockfist uh, quiets the crowd once more. And he then says, to prove yourself, you will bring me the white cloak of Ogalai. And then he says, the chieftain of the Thunlaka Laga tribe. And that immediately just like everybody starts like, oh, 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 oh and just kind of like goes into it. Of course, it's all grunts and grumbles to you because it's all in giant, but you see, it kind of makes a, a commotion. And uh, you kind of also see uh, the rest of the group, you also see a kind of like a look in Olanu's eyes uh, as a bit of a surprise. You wish to start a war? They started the war many years ago. It is up to us to end it now. He goes, I do not care how you retrieve the cloak. That is up to you. Can I make a request? He kind of like puts his chin up in the air. Can a war party be on standby? And he goes, you've been away too long, Iceheart. Our war parties are always on standby. Okay. We'll do it. The cloak will be at your feet. He kind of like brings his chin back down and then brings his arms back like outward. Then let it be known that Olanu, Iceheart, Akanathi shall try and prove herself with her group and see if the griffins will do their bidding. But until then, we eat. And everybody kind of feasts and cheers and kind of like goes back to what they were doing. Ace Heart, can I talk to you later? Yeah, 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 we'll talk about it. Don't worry. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to fight. There might be a fight. Hmm. You see, uh, that uh, when you when you say this and uh, you kind of are eh, whispering a little bit, um, that strong striker has been listening in, listening in like intently towards you guys, and he goes, "Oh, there's definitely." I mean, but it might not necessarily be a war. Like, we'll no, 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 fuck those no. Now it's gonna be a fight. <laughs> no, fuck those guys. How's there been more conflict since I've been gone? It's been constant. It's been constant. constant. Yes. Every time we have uh, a, a goat ball game, they come over and they they try to, to fuck with our griffins and they they do all kinds of shit. They're terrible people. It's like gang wars. <laughs> it's like a rival summer camps. We literally can't do anything without them, you know, knocking our skis. 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> but we're Akhenathi. Just give them a few punches and they'll go running like last time. Yeah, they do every time. It's just, uh, it's just a matter of every time we do something, they come back. <sighs> They're like vermin. They're like kids. Yeah. We'll it's... talk about this after this feast, please, Olano. Uh, yeah. Okay. By the way, I have my suspicions on why you disappeared. He kind of like immediately kind of like sits back in his chair and he's like, he just puts his hand up and he goes, I know. And he goes, it has made me a better warrior. And he goes, and seemingly you, well. Unlike you, I didn't bow down to my father's orders. <laughs> he says, uh, if only it were that easy. Hmm. Or simple, not easy. He goes, well. <clears throat> been a long night I think it's time I rest as he like says it loudly to the group and he says um there are chambers in the back where we all usually sleep I don't know about your friends but uh not much room left I will rest with my family tonight of course. He stands up and he like grabs uh, a couple of the uh, Goliath uh, women that are kind of uh, gathered around the table and uh, they both grab some mead and they all walk into the back room away. And right. then uh, the rest of like the night, everybody can eat and have fun. Uh, you see Veleni is very uncomfortable with this whole situation as she just kind of like is staring everybody down um, and she looks to be like eyeing the griffins like constantly uh, making sure that they're not like you know, trying to kill her uh, she seems a little uncomfortable around the, the animals Iceheart can uh, you come with me for a moment please yeah actually um, there's something we can walk and there was something I wanted to grab from it's not really a room, but from wherever the area where my family is. All Stays. right, I'll I'll wait for you somewhere near the stop under the cave. Oh no, just walk with others. me. Oh, all right. Let me just grab the others then. And she'll like motion over towards like Abel, Trey, and Leoden, and just like not Abel, Trey, and Leoden, Abel, Grimly, and Leoden, and just you know motion with her hands to like to come follow. Mm -hmm. Just see Grimly like drinking mead and speaking in dwarvish and common and telling stories of Olanu to somebody that barely understands him. Yeah, there's a, there's like literally uh, one Goliath is like drinking next to you and just like, <sighs> like, <laughs> like just having to like be there and listen to you. Is, is For this tiny, inside. tiny man. Yeah. <laughs> That's all they hear. Um, so you guys all follow? Yeah. Velany will also catch the drift and she'll follow as well. Okay. You're muted, Leoden. <laughs> I wasn't going to follow, but I guess I'll follow. You don't have to. <laughs> I, I mean, saw in your eye. <laughs> you don't have to. If you want to just continue playing and drinking, you're more than welcome. She's worried that dumb decisions are going to be made without her. So I'm going to follow. Okay. Already done. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that conversation about? So, um, the what in the name of the nine hells did you just get us into? All I heard well, was, I we'll do it. She was trying to answer the exact same question <laughs> that Grimly just asked. Just in a yeah. nicer way. Get to it. Okay. Felony. Jesus so, Christ. Years, really, really long time ago. 
um, there was a goat ball game uh, between the Akanathi and the Thun... Laka Laka. Laka Laka. Uh, and <laughs> during this game, the goat ball uh, ended up going near a griffin. Uh, one of the Thun Laka Laka players uh, went over to it um, and here's there's a little disagreement on what exactly happens but uh, from the Okanathi's perspective this ingrate punched the gl the uh, griffin to get the ball back and as such the griffin defended itself and took her arm she lived, and by all accounts, she's a great warrior now, so it's whatever. But later that night, in anger, they threw in like a laka, descended upon the nest, and murdered that griffin. The Okanathi holds great respect for a griffin. They're part of us. They are one with our tribe. And this is an affront that cannot be forgiven lightly, anyway. And what is the other version of the story? That the girl had attempted to retrieve the ball without any physical contact, and the bird just angrily attacked uh, for no reason. That's simply not true. If you ask me, it sounds like it doesn't really matter which version is true. Yeah. Each tribe feels that they were wronged. And if they're half as stubborn as you are, that's not going to go away easily. No, but Leiden's good at talking to people. So that's so, what we're going to do. We're going to talk the cape off of them. Well, give, give, give that a you. shot. I could trade this one and I show the cape of the winter wolf that I've been wearing for a while. Very nice. Clock. You know, at the very least, it would be worthwhile to at least talk to this individual. And perhaps, I doubt we're going to be able to put this entire conflict to rest, but if nothing else, we might be able to pause it. Yeah, there's some other stuff. Well, Lovely. okay, so either we talk this out and everything goes great, he gives us a cloak, and we walk off, we're good. Uh, or things go a little messy, we start a, an all-out war, because it's a pretty <laughs> conflict, and the Akhenathi have, peop have scouts in the area, and we'll get back up. I get the feeling war is the more likely outcome. I would greatly prefer that not to be the case. The last thing we need is to be wasting resources on some, quite frankly, petty intertribal conflict. Or time. There's a chance we could also potentially border peace. She kind of says that disgusted like. <laughs> May Whatever I make it a takes. Suggestion here. Hmm? Both of these tribes are likely not going to want to listen to anything to do with that incident. Certainly seems like your tribe, and to a lesser degree, even yourself, have made a choice on that. Hmm. But I think everyone can agree that natural survival in this winter is far more important than any sort of petty conflict or squabble. And that's where we might be able to broker peace of some sort. Or at least convince them to give us the cloak. If nothing else, we can at least hope that they'll be reasonable enough to realize that they can go back to beating each other to half to death when the winter is over. Be fun. A little commotion kind of comes from the uh, the other room. 
as you kind of peek around the corner and you can see uh, the chieftain is uh, currently um, in the midst of uh, an eating competition with uh, the um, uh, her father, excuse me, uh, Strong Bear, as both of them are like chowing down on like huge haunches and and everybody's cheering. <laughs> I did want to grab something uh, from the area real quick. Uh, it's it's just a change of clothes, nothing. Um, I was actually now looking at the two that's have an eating competition. There's sort of like a weird look on her face, as if she's like deep in thought. Uh, what's that look? <laughs> Just a thought. Don't worry about it for now, but... Hmm. Don't poison my father. <laughs> what? No! Do I look like I'm going to poison someone in the middle of the night? Don't answer that, but no, I don't. <laughs> I you, you, see, you see Bellany, like, raise a finger and then put a finger down? <laughs> I look over at Abel. I was the only one that tried to save you, poor <laughs> girl. You should make sure you keep that finger down. <laughs> Alana like walks over to where a couple of beds and like a small chest are. Uh, by beds, I mean like piles of hay with furs laid over them. Sure. Uh, good luck sleeping tonight, guys. Um, <laughs> and she just uh, she rifles through the chest uh, real quick, um, and she finds uh, a pair of pants and like a cropped uh, top, um, and she just changes right there. She doesn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Able and like firmly like immediately like <laughs> look the other way. Um and uh what you call it? As you guys look the other way, uh you look back into the room that's currently occupied with all the people, you see uh one Goliath is like bent down at the waist and slowly poking like the undead kobold in the eye. And just like with a confused look on his face. Was this uh, one of them that spoke any kind of broken common <gasps> Oopla, with the 10 bits thank you um they again this is uh is this one of uh, yeah all of them can speak broken common it's just a non-common thing to do i'll just let him go you don't want to do that he just turns his head without like moving his waist looks at you uh are you trying to like intimidate him no, I'm literally telling him not to mess with the dead cobalt. Okay, go ahead and roll a persuasion. Okay. 32. <laughs> one of these days she'll roll a one if I just make her keep rolling. That'll be amazing. Oh, wait, you said roll a one. I thought you said roll one. 17. 17, okay. He kind of like uh, reels back and then look, looks at his finger and wipes it on his chest. Kind of goes back up and <clears throat> kind of grunt <laughs> and then goes back to the table. Oh, I have one more story to tell you. And I just walk off towards him. The guy that was listening <laughs> to you, like his eyes get really wide and he like starts to like make his beeline his way to the back of the room <laughs> like to be unnoticed. And Rob is going to like glance back towards Abel and Leodon real briefly and say, I best make sure Grimley's okay. I'll leave you two alone. And then just like goes off after Grimly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys can just mingle. Okay. Try and. Olanu, come here. She like yeah. takes Olanu by the arm and like leads her away from the two of them. Yeah. Come as on. you as you as you start getting led away, Olanu, uh, entering the the doorway that kind of leads back into the the meat hall. Um, you see your mother is standing at the doorway, kind of just like leaning up against it with her arms crossed and then notices that you're approaching, turns around and uh, she kind of like waves you over and says, um, Alana, would you care to join me real quick or word? Yes. Um, and can this wait? Where? Oh, no, she's saying kin. Kin. Oh, kin. <laughs> <laughs> Rob was just going to look back at Olan and just be like, those two back there have stuff they need to talk about, so I'm pretty sure I can wait. Okay. Well, there's like a there's like a whole like area. There's like a whole fucking cave system here. Uh, yeah, yeah Kinrob is just trying to give Leoden and, and Abel like some oh, that. Some peace and quiet. It's okay. <laughs> That's fine. I'm just saying in terms of like 
saying like um they can't talk because they're talking it's more along the lines of like they're gonna go somewhere else to talk if yeah if yeah can i just gonna walk off and like leave them to do whatever they were doing then she's gonna like briefly look around to see if she can see grimly and then like seeing the horrified look on the goliath she's gonna be like <laughs> you know what <laughs> at this point the other goliath has like been cornered it's like in a corner right now like like holding its cup with two hands and Grimly is just like laughing his ass off, like knee slapping, just like this awesome story that he remembered. And Rob was just gonna go over to like try and give the Goliath an escape exit or something while <laughs> Alanu, Abel, and um, Leah didn't have our chats. Okay, all right. Uh, Abel and and Leodin, did you have anything? If she's not, if I'm not stopped, I'm gonna head in back to the percussion circle to add some melody. I'll call your name out as you start to walk away. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lead in starts going and then like like you call her her name and she like stops with like her head down at the ground and like doesn't move for a second. The, my shoulder my shoulders tense just ever so slightly. <laughs> Excellent. I like take a deep breath. Yeah? Do you want to talk about what happened, or...? You mean how you tried to kill me? His, uh... He's just looking down the whole time. He can't even look you in the eye. I don't know if you're even looking at him, or if you're still <laughs> facing away. I turned around. Yeah. So... Um... My troop talks about knowing something in your head and knowing something in your heart, because sometimes there's a disconnect between those. So in my head, I know that you were controlled by something that wasn't you. My heart doesn't know it yet. Part of me knows that you would never do that. And part of me wonders if you're going to kill me in my sleep. I would never do anything like that to you, Leiden. Do you see it? But you did it. And you can't even look at me now. When she says that, she I, I would literally like get down like look up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I'm just forcing him to try and look at me yep. um, Lead and there's it feels like there's a dagger in my chest and I it hurts me to know that you feel this way and I just want you I don't know I don't know if I can earn your trust or I promise that I would never intentionally hurt you and I'll do my best to, to avoid hurting you unintentionally as well and you don't have to trust in my word or me I will keep that promise and find your wife I'll find her I know but I have been that's why I try to protect all the children and the weak before the dragon fight. I don't believe you wanted to hurt me. It's just gonna take a minute. You know, um, my mother used to tell me that she was a jeweler. She used to tell me that we are all uncut gems. That there is value and worth and potential but that you need to cut away what isn't necessary and sometimes that can hurt and I'm trying my best but it's so hard and that would never hurt you, Leiden. Never. And I'm going to reach into my bag and I'm going to pull out something that's wrapped in a little bit of leather. I had a lot of free time to gather my racing thoughts and um, 
This is not meant to be a bribe. This is not meant to coerce you into trusting me again, but this is something that you deserve. And I'll just hand it over to her. I hope she takes it. Take it. What? What is it? And I slowly open the little bits of leather. Um, you see... It's a little, it's a very simple brooch for a cloak. It's a sunburst made of polished walrus ivory um, with little bits of simple silver filigree that radiate outwards from a purple tourmaline gemstone set in the center. And it's just a very simple piece for your cloak. Make this. He just nods. I've only had two people in my life make something for me like this. Oh, I hope you like it. She's going to hug him. I'm going to hug him. She kind of is taken back and he doesn't hug back right away, but eventually wraps his arms around and just looking up with his eyes closed, trying not to cry. Um, she backs away, does one of these real fast, and she just like pins the brooch to her clothes and not her cloak right now, because whatever she said. So you're forgiven, but don't do it again. And then she just turns and leaves. <laughs> smirks a little as she walks away and then shouts, Leiden. My mother always my mother also said that not everyone can appreciate a gemstone. But I appreciate you. She keeps walking. Because she doesn't want to get into the emotions <laughs> of the conversation. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. You see, you see, Leah did kind of pause for a second after you say that, but then just continues to walk, acknowledging your statement, but of course, continuing on. And I'll just and then sort she's of. She's going to go and hit Kinrava. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, sort of... <laughs> I'll pat myself Literally off. Now just sort of looking around, standing alone. Cuckoo is underneath your feet, looking directly up at you. Oh, how long have you been there? The whole time. He just shakes his head and walks off to look for somewhere to sleep. Cuckoo follows you. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Grimly and Kin are currently... Uh, battling kind of back and forth while uh, this one Goliath attempts to kind of like slide his way around uh, Grimly. Uh, Grimly places his hand, places his hand against the wall, just not even thinking about it, blocking his path and keeping them there, making it even more awkward. I swear, no, it's it just three heads. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Kinrava's just like giving him the look the principal gives the kid that showed up with alcohol at school. <laughs> You were there. <laughs> and as that conversation goes on, Alanu, your mother, takes you uh, through a few of the caverns uh, here, of course, all familiar to you, um, <clears throat> and leads you out to the Griffin training area, uh, which is a large cavern uh, that has several... Uh, of the nests set up around the area. And you can see a few griffin are sleeping. A lot of smaller griffin uh, kind of like waiting around. Some of them playing with each other still. Uh, but she leads you out to um, the the outer portion. So there, this cave, this cavern entrance is uh, a top. So it, ta it takes you a little bit of time to go up. But once you get there, it is open on one side to the night air. And kind of uh, Aladdin-like, 
can see like uh, out past this terrace and she sits there on the edge with her legs kind of dangling over the edge as a, a small griffin that looks to be like uh, just almost like a, 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 a goopy looking skinny chicken at this point um, approaches and uh, just sits in her lap. And she kind of just begins to pet it in on its head. Um, and she says, come sit. Oh, and she goes and sits. She looks over and she smiles as she kind of pets the, the griffin on the head. She says, you've been away for quite some time, Olanu. It's, uh, it's strange to, to go so long without seeing you. Yeah. It's been quite a while. Percy seems to be doing well. Glad to see that. Yeah. Uh, I should have started training him sooner. She, she says, she kind of like bears it no mind. And then she says, so, and she looks around, looks back. Have you had any more visions? Of a sort. Have you ever experienced sharing a dream or vision? I have shared in a vision before, yes, uh, with another member of the tribe during one of our holy rituals. It happened to me in the short one. He worships a golden god with a eye. It seemed like he was running or chasing something before he came to me. He didn't recognize me. And then we ran through the storm trying to find his friend. And it was weird. It was like the snow just was hitting a barrier. And... We could pass through it, and on the other side was his his god. Uh, a shining bright light, uh, and he raised his hand out towards us, and there was an eye on his palm that shed light, and then we woke. Have you consulted with the spirit? Before, yes. They told me to brace myself when he was running towards us. I wonder if there's something more to what Grimly, by the way, that's his name, um, is running from. If I need to help him somehow get away from it? Kind of looks out towards the stars as she listens to you. Her feet dangle over the side, almost like a little girl. And she has her hands down, like at her sides, as she looks and she says, The spirits speak in many mysterious ways. It is up to us to decipher what it is that they truly mean. Yeah. Yeah. She says, Iceheart, I assume you've been communing with your spirits quite a bit, considering your stalwartness, ability to do the things you said you were doing, Mead Hall. Yes. Perhaps it is time that you truly got to know your spirits. Would you mind if we commune together? Absolutely. Very well. And she stands up and she, <laughs> she takes that little chicken griffin and uh, she kind of nudges it towards the edge and it looks a little scared. Like it's like pawing at the edge and then she like taps it on the butt and it just whoo, over the edge. And then suddenly it just like all weird like. And then uh, it's first flight. It is. And she goes huh. and uh, she she basically says. He's been training for quite some time now. I'm happy to see it's paid off. 
And he goes, yeah. and she says, no, nope. even the weakest of, of uh, individuals show signs of strength. Yes. Uh, follow me. As she leads you into another chamber, you see a tall, 10 foot tall pillar covered in runes. These runes are written in giant. And this room you know to be, uh, of course, one of the two ritual rooms or prayer rooms uh, here in the cavern. Um, this one speaks uh, closely to your, your, your mind, though. The other one is specifically for, like, it's as if, it's as if like, praying to two gods, technically. One is, like, you know, you pray for strength, and the other one you pray for wisdom kind of thing. Um, this one is more, of course, the the wisdom-esque um, shrine. Um, this one, let's see. Um, my apologies. Give me one second. This is... There it is. This is the Shrine of Mind and Spirit. Um, so, you see this thing, and she asks you to walk up to the shrine and place your hand upon it, um, as you've seen her do many times. Now, this is your first official kind of, like, ritual moment. Uh, you had not done this since, uh, or ever, you know, ever before, but you've seen your mother and several others that have been kind of given the um the okay to do so um so again you know your mother as the spiritual leader of your people and she has now chosen you to take upon this uh this little bit of um she trusts you enough to take this with her this little journey so you step up to the pillar you place your hand upon it and these carved runes when you place your hand upon it begin to fill with blue light coming from the top and filling to the bottom, kind of shining. Uh, this, of course, is natural for your Goliaths. Um, and as this happens, your hands placed upon this thing, once the runes are full, it kind of bursts with light a little bit, and suddenly all the markings on your body start to glow along with it. That darkish blue turns into like a bluish light within the room. Um, some of which are even, like, projected on the walls. And your mother kind of goes into a giant prayer. Uh, she begins to chant, and uh, she asks to speak with the, um, the spirits. And as you are praying with your mother, you feel energy kind of filling you from within. And with that, um, let's see. Uh, within the next 24 hours, uh, you can take an additional D6 and roll it to any wisdom checks you have for whatever reason. Oh, wisdom or charisma. Excuse me. You can decide to use it even after your D20 roll. You don't have to, it's not necessarily ha a thing that needs to be used before you roll. Uh, and uh, you can, like I said, it's within 24 hours. So it go, it, this, this feeling kind of goes away after 24 hours. Um, you are filled with this, uh, this spiritual energy. And as this happens, the uh, projections on the walls begin to slowly morph into different animals as they run across the surface of the cavern walls. And you see a wolf and an owl and a bear running together, um, all kind of encircling you with a long trail of light following. And as that happens, um, you see uh, your mother finish the prayer. And as your mother finishes the prayer, she opens her eyes and a little bit of blue smoke kind of comes from her eyes and then it kind of like dissipates into her regular eyes again. And the runes poof, return to normal. Take your hand off of the pillar, and the ceremony is complete. She says, May the spirits guide you on your journey tomorrow, wherever it may lead. Thank you, Mother. 
speak with your spirits often. They may guide you where you need to go, even if you are lost. places her arms kind of like atop your shoulders you place yours on top of her shoulders and you kind of like uh knock your foreheads together and, and like kind of just lean against each other um you do notice uh, a small tear kind of like drops from her uh from her eyes and uh she says safe i will i'll come back to the akanathi once the sun returns and may the sun return soon as it can. that me or so that my son may return as well. Uh, I need to make amends with Strong Striker. She kind of like was long ago, old honor. I know. But if that is what you wish, then so be it. I believe they leave in the morning. Father, he got him posted far away. Whatever got him posted out there, it has been nothing but good for him. Okay. Go now. Go back to your friends. It seems that they uh, might need you. Uh, pretty sure they're not too accustomed to the Goliath way. I think Grimley's in trouble. She says, um, take care, please. Take care of your friends. It seems that they, uh, they would do the same. They would. Right. Go with the wind now. Before that, she'll actually take the time to actually give her mom, like, a proper hug. Yeah. So like you got she's like ready to leave and she kind of like even starts to back away and then like gets pulled in for like a bigger stronger hug and she's like oh and then she kind of like softly stops the tense and just kind of like sinks into it and you head back is uh, there, yeah go ahead there is one thing um at some point uh she would want to go find a strong striker just to have a small talk with him anybody else you have anything? And Rob is just dragging grimly away from this Goliath at this point. <laughs> sure. Um, all right. So Strong Striker seems to be uh, at this point. Um, you you walk into the room that he had entered uh, with the two female companions. Um, you note that the two female com companions are are currently uh, passed out. Um, one is in a, a bunk, like, as soon as you enter on your left, and then one is a few to your right. Uh, but Strong Striker is in the back of the room uh, and currently just lying in bed with his hands behind his back, his uh, one leg up and bent uh, as he just kind of, like, stares up uh, at the ceiling. He, heard, he hears, like, some rocks being uh, tussled in front of him, and he, like, sits up. Ice heart. Now that you've gotten that out of your system. She just kind of nods at the two. He's like, it's not what it looks like. It, I... mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway. Really? It, those are those are friends. Mm -hmm. Friends, right. Okay. I understand you couldn't turn down the orders to leave. I understand that it was probably my father who got you stationed out there to begin with. I understand that despite all of that, 
you've actually done really well for yourself. And I'm happy for you. It is my intention to come back to the Akhenathi as soon as the sun returns. If you are still interested, perhaps you could meet me then. He had his arms kind of like wrapped around his knees as he kind of sat up to listen to you. And as soon as you say something like that, he gets like he crawls forward and then gets onto his knees and then like uh, sits up and says, I swear. They were just friends. And I and I'm not just saying that to like make amends. Honestly. They are friends. As a matter of fact, uh one of them is in my war party. Uh and go ahead and uh roll an insight check real quick. Okay. <laughs> oh uh she believes whatever the fuck he just said. <laughs> Carpe Diem coming in here with a Thanks. raid. <laughs> Carpe diem, thank you very much. Um, yeah, that was a six. <laughs> you look over, and he, like, pulls down his, uh, like, armor, uh, like, uh, leather armor that he has down on his wrist, and you can see a marking uh, that indicates his war party that he kind of travels around with, uh, his, like, scouting party. Um, and you look over, and you can see a very similar mark on one of the females. And he goes, I would never. I... Olano, may I call you that? I mean, you have, so, yeah. Apologize if I did it out of context. Uh, I... I have never looked at another female the way I have since you left. I left. Um, it's not because I don't want to. Pride. But no one has captured my attention and heart the way you had. It's... beyond words. Something I can't explain necessarily. But I will say that I will continue to do my job even if it was your father that sent me out or had me sent out. It is a part of me now. And if you are to return, then a glorious day that will be. But my position is my position, and I will continue to do what is necessary for the tribe. If that means that you shall follow me in my duties, well then, I pray to whatever God we pray to. That, um, that is exactly what you want. But if it is not what you want, then I fully accept it. See, you were doing so well until you said follow. Um. You see him kind of like slink back on his, his butt. Do I see you again? Do what? Say again? If I see you again. We'll talk more then. Until I that. I await the hour. Hmm. Have a good night. She gets up and walks away. As you're walking away, you can hear like, uh, like skin on skin as he's like, you turn around and see him like smacking his head and he's like, idiot, God. Seems to be self chastising as you walk away. And at this point, you rejoin the party. It comes to a droll pretty early into the morning hours. And you guys find sleep for the night. That is where we will end today's session.
Oh, God. <laughs> what a great what a session. Show. Yeah. <laughs> for those that are watching on YouTube, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, you got to see a little sneak peek uh, of all the characters, one-on-one -on -one sessions. Hopefully next week you'll see it all kind of come to light. If not, then you at least still know a little bit of what's going on in their minds. Uh, so yeah, stick around. We are going to, uh, we're going to be doing what is called the Nat 1 After Snow, if you are not familiar. We're going to be taking a Q&A from the, uh, the chat and also a few questions from Discord that we have gathered through the, throughout the week. And we'll be asking the players to see what is going on in their character's mind. Uh, so, uh, real quick, I wanted to thank you guys for being here. Uh, we'll see you next week. I hope you guys check out the Nat 1 After Snow really quick after that. Uh, and we will see you later. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, anyways, have a great week and keep being your best selves. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.